Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, The Shattered Obelisk, Episode 14. Neznar, the spider. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, we're going to be hopping into game in just a minute, but before we do, let me just say hello. Hi, how's it going? I am your dungeon master. I'm Kelly, Vintage Edition, and uh, I use he and him as my pronouns, folks. And uh, hey, today we got a lot of things to talk about, but most of that involves killing this very specific drow. Which we're going to get into in just a minute. But before we do, let us say hello to our intrepid cast, including the Ghost of Christine. Hello, Ghost of Christine. Hello. Hello. This is Ghost of Christine. She is dead. <laughs> No. Uh, seriously, though, my back is fucked up again, so I am not visual tonight because I am as reclined as I can be in my computer chair with a heating pad and lots of painkiller to try and get through this. But she looks um, gorgeous, folks. But I let am just, here. Let me just tell you. I, you dirty liar. Um, I am here, though, for the game and to play Alessandra. So, yeah, I'm Christina. I use she, her pronouns, and... Tonight, I get to play Lady Alessandra Celeste Martine Barroquel, who also uses she, her pronouns as an ASMR paladin. Nice. All right. And next. By the way, up. happy birthday, Kelly. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Like I said, I'm vintage. Um, so hello, everybody. Thank you very much. I'm working on my birthday because, hey, it's never worked to run a game. It's always worked to run a game. <laughs> Uh, but I get to spend time with my friends, so I'm pretty pleased with that. And I get to spend time with you, dear viewer. So hey, uh, while you're thinking about it, if you want to get me a present, we do have a throne and we do have a Patreon. So just saying. <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of gifts to the world, let's say hello to Caitlin. Hello. Happy birthday, Kelly. Oh, thank you. I'm We're doing Caitlin. this for every single person. Happy yeah, birthday probably. to your baby boy. So. Because it was his birthday oh, not that long ago. It was his birthday. Yeah, last week he was. He's the big one. He is the big one. One. The child yep. of the nether deep. Yep. And he's decided now that he's one, he's going to do a whole bunch of things all at once, like crawling actually on his knees. Oh, And good saying I mama. How to do that. Oh, he did mama? And it, today he did mama. And then the other day he did mama. And Chris's dad heard that one. So it's not just me being crazy. Wait, does he think that Chris's dad is his mama? No, no, no. But okay, I was okay. like sitting beside him. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, who are you? Why are you here? Anyway, sorry. I'm Caitlin. <laughs> okay. Hi. I use she her pronouns. And so does Anthea Briarfoot, uh, the halfling artificer alchemist of the group. And her little homunculus, Squish. Well, Squish actually uses like they, them. Yeah. So. Does Squish even know what a pronoun is? Did it absorb it? Probably any? not. Okay. It, it, it can't eat it. It's still on and nouns. And it can't. Yeah. 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 If, if that. If that if really. That. Yeah. Speaking of someone else who's all that, it's Amy. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm all that, but okay. Hi. And a bag of chips. I'm Amy. <laughs> what? Yeah, all that and a bag of chips. I want chips. Yeah. Anyway, hi, I'm Amy. Pronouns are she, her, they, them, and I'm playing Lyric, the uh, tiefling bard, College of Creation. Fantastic. And apparently, I stole everyone's bacon last time. You did, and you, uh, you talked to a dog that wasn't present because my dog started going nuts, and you were like, "Woof, woof." I don't know why I said that. Woof, woof. <laughs> Oh, God. Just continuing to make everyone think that Lyric's losing it. That's great. Good, 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 good. All right. Also losing it is Krista. You're not wrong. Bonne fête, Kelly. Je m'appelle Krista. Boba Fett to you, too. Pronouns. I use she, they, and her, them. And I am playing Carmilla Arazarin, our dampier fighter, who also uses, or who primarily uses she, her pronouns. Beautiful. Also beautiful. It's Chris. Yeah, I got a nice intro. Happy birthday, Kelly. Uh, my name is Chris. I use he or they pronouns, and I am playing Sindri, the Way of the Ascendant Dragon Monk, and he uses he or him pronouns. I forgot how my class works the last game, so thank you for reminding me. Uh, yeah, I, I want to say thank you. There was a YouTube comment that like corrected, uh, like basically suggested, hey, are you using a house rule or I'm just wondering, but it was the nicest correction I I can remember having in like a year or two. So you there who left that nice comment, which I still will reply to. Thank you. That was a very nice way of, of saying that. No. Like, there was also another one. 
that that corrected uh, me using the dampier bite ability. Because um, he I uses thought, constitution. What the hell? You, yeah, I thought you may use your constitution bonus instead of your strength or dex, but it says you use your constitution bonus instead of strength or dex. So I had read that. I just read it wrong. So hmm. thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, and I just flat out forgot. Like, I'm like, I've been playing this for 13 games. How does my class work? And then just like, well, meh, like this, I guess. Um, so thank you. Uh, and I am super excited to hopefully wrap up Chapter 4 tonight. I think we're going to. I think we're going to. Um, so, folks, a couple of things before we begin. Uh, first of all, I'm old. Uh, thanks for sticking it out with me. I'm in, in YouTube years, I'm dead. And in Twitch years, I'm basically a zombie. But there's a new zombie movie out by, by Zelda Williams, so I probably should go see that. Um, everybody go support um, uh, Lisa, Lisa Frankenstein. I think it's Lisa, Lisa Frankenstein. It's by, it's by Robin Williams' daughter. Oh, is that daughter. by Robin... Neat. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And she has like an encyclopedic knowledge of horror movies. So it's like, it looks fantastic. It um, looks fun. Other, it does look, I'm, I'm so excited. A couple of other things I want to announce to you though. And that is, uh, first of all, they finally released the date for Vecna Eve of Ruin today for my birthday. Wizards of the Coast specifically. Oh my God. That's a lot of subs. Thank you, Breck. Holy crap. Holy crap. How many subs? What the, f what the hell? How many is that? That was 50. Did you what see the, the all time record shattered? Like, right, like across Easy the top crazy. there. Easy. Yep. Hey, Brett, don't forget one time holy, subs. Holy crap! <laughs> I'm gonna leave this in the in the in the YouTube edit because that's 50 subs. You just yeah. bought your way to the YouTube edit, Breck. Um, holy crap! You're amazing, Breck. <laughs> what does that Gen Z language mean? Yeah. What is that Gen Z? Gooped and gagged. Gooped and gagged. Yeah, so yeah, anyway, yeah, in. in <laughs> In YouTube years, I'm dead, uh, but uh, they released uh, the date for uh, Vecna Eve of Ruin, so it's May 21st. I was hoping it was September. It's May. We're, we're, we're going to make it happen. I don't know what day of the week it's going to be, but don't worry, we're going to do it. We've got a cast already. It's going to be... Oh. Hey, maybe uh, we'll just maybe we'll just TPK tonight, and then you don't have to worry about having to schedule No, my cast again. can't do Mondays, but I guess I could have Mondays off. We could you could shuffle things onto Monday. You guys could be like buried under the shattered obelisk. I just got a new thing at hairspray. I'm not doing. <laughs> you can join. You can join Becca. <laughs> Sindri can survive and just be like, you know what? Screw this. I'm gonna go fight a lich. Oh, oh I gotta pick your brain about what you're using, just because. Yeah. Yeah. I need to figure. I need to find out after. Uh, so other things that are good for you to know are that um, I figured that you should know this. We have a very special three-part actual play that uh, we have been contacted by Studio Hermitage uh, to run. Uh, it's a game called Our Brilliant Ruin. It's going to be running on Tuesday the 27th of this month, as well as the 7th and 14th of March. So a Tuesday, then a Thursday, and a Thursday. Uh, and it is a fantastic game from a new studio that is working on this, this just amazing like the, the vibe of this game is absolutely amazing. It's got like splashes of like Eldritch Horror, like Call of Cthulhu. It's got the vibe of like Bioshock Infinite in a lot of ways. It looks dope. It's going to be fantastic. And uh, sponsored games really help keep us above water. So join us for those. Check out their Kickstarter, which is dropping the same day that our first episode is. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'll try to get it up within 24 hours for YouTube because it is imperative that you check out their Kickstarter. Uh, it looks like a really good game. And I really... Thank you so much for all the subs, guys. Uh, I really do appreciate you uh, coming and enjoying that with us. Uh, besides that, I also appreciate you going and enjoying our sponsor for the night, Bookworm Games. Uh, Bookworm Games, of course, is your emporium of dice, but friends as well. That's right, you can get familiars, little frogs with wizard hats, you can get dragons and more, and very soon, fungal familiars, which are a beautifully designed enamel pins that you can wear or keep on your pin purses or anything like that. That Kickstarter is going to be dropping very soon. I will give you more info as it comes. But also, I want to remind you that they have their new tea line uh, that is releasing right now because spring is around the air, or is around the corner, and you should get some tea, folks. So, you know, check them out. Bookroomgames.com. Use code DORKTALES to save 15%. Uh, besides that, uh, does anybody have any announcements? Anything fun that they want to share before we hop into game? Uh, reminder that if you're in the Vancouver-ish area and you want to come out to uh, 
Terminal City Comic Con. Uh, I'm running a couple of games. They're all full, but I am going to be around for most of that weekend. So if you want to come say hi, I'm going to have some stickers and stuff. So come find me. Hey, Crystal, so many what stickers? weekend is Terminal City Comic Con? What weekend is that? Sorry? <laughs> what weekend is Terminal City Comic Con? Terminal City Comic I was literally just like desperately grabbing for one of my planners. <laughs> no! I what weekend it was. Um, it's, the, it's in March. It's the end, second, the 15th, 16th, and 17th of March. Nice. Perfect days for it. Yes, and it's all board game. There's there's no like panels or anything because it's literally just all board games and TTRPGs being played, uh, and so you can just like walk around and watch them be played or join in and play them. Uh, there's still some slots available, so for some very cool games, if you go to Terminal City Comic Con website right now, you can, you you pre sign up for all your games, and it's a very cool. Uh, and I think maybe some of the people from Our Story Insight, which some of us have voiced on, Ooh. are also going to be there. So. That's going to be fantastic. Everybody Alante go and said check. might be up, so I might get to go hang out with them. I like Alante. You can clip that and send it to them. Nice. All right, so folks, we're going to hop into game in just a minute. But before I do, I just want to thank you for being here and enjoying the what is hopefully going to be the wrap-up of uh, part one of this book. After this, we get to go into the really weird stuff, and i got to admit, that's the part that I am the most excited about. Um... Beyond that, let me just get down here and uh, let's kick it. Last time on Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. You finally made it to Wave Echo Cave after departing from your friend Gundren Rockseeker. Gundren returned to Fandolin, along with a number of goods that had been collected from the battle site at Cragmaw Castle. While you investigated the edge of Wave Echo Cave, you eventually found your way inside. Not only that, you found that there were some, well, there was a dead dwarf waiting for you at the front, one of Gundren's brothers. And further inside, the misshapen body of one of those strange goblins. Even further beyond, you soon found yourself coming across a series of corridors beset by ochre jelly. After a fairly quick but heated battle, you were able to defeat them, then took a refreshing break at a, at a snake-infested underground lake. With such scenic sights as that, you continued north where you found a quarry and pushed many, many creatures off of a ledge. In fact, that fight was over so quickly, it didn't even create enough sound to warrant attention from nearby guards. After that, you decided to rest, having located which way the spider himself was. Going back to Dead Snake Lake, you took a short rest. And it is from here that we continue our journey. <clears throat> Let's pop over to maps. The Dead Snake lies on the ground nearby. The huge coiling mass of scale and muscle destroyed, but still menacing. You take a moment to meditate, Sindri, and the rest of you take a moment to catch your breath, bandage yourselves up from any bruises, or reset yourself for the battle ahead. Ten minutes... Fifteen minutes pass. You feel your stamina return to you. And it is now that we begin our story with you all ready to progress northward. As you are catching your breath, you will hear the sound of boisterous, raucous discussion in Goblin. Coming from a corridor down to your right, on the eastern side of this dungeon. If you had to place it, anybody with a passive perception of 15 or higher will recognize that the goblin is accented and deep. It sounds like more bugbears. It's hard to tell. But you have a good feeling about that. And with that, what are we all doing? Um, I think uh, Carmilla is very sort of somberly making sure everything's packed. 
uh, making sure her new armor is correct because she's still not totally used to it. Um, and it's just sort of like keeping an eye on everyone, keeping an eye around. And um, then when she's ready, she, if, even if everyone is, else isn't, she's just going to go stand by um, the entrance to the stairs where we heard, we heard noises coming from behind a door, right? Yes. Um, yeah, she's just going to be kind of standing watch at that door until everyone else is ready. All right, so making your way up there, you can get a good look at it. There is a barricaded door. And as you are keeping your eye on it, can you make me an investigation roll, please? Sure. I'll do my best. Yeah, oh, that's a six on the dice. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Um, and I don't have investigation, so that's a seven total. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, taking a look at that, you're going to see that it looks like a hastily erected barricade. It's, um... The door itself has a number of scratch marks on the outside of it. And you can see that, um... It looks like something tried to get in at one point, but you have no idea exactly what. Perhaps we should be quick. Sindri's gonna finish like packing his his wounds from <laughs> Bugbear. And like kind of this uh, I guess we don't want them to move while we're waiting, so I think I'm well, well enough. I don't know. They got me pretty hard last time. Is Sindri still like injured, or were you able to no. hit dice? Just whining. He used hit dice. <laughs> hmm. They did hit pretty hard. But I think I'm good. You good, Squish? Oh. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That's okay. what I'm here for. I think. I think we're both good here. <sighs> Lurk. I I'm fine. All right. So it looks like there are two ways to the north. There's the way through the under, well, the underpass through the stream that you took last game. But it looks like if you sneak past the door, there's a drier way of getting there. But that does require you sneaking past a room full of bugbears. We have been historically good at that. And hysterically good at it. <laughs> yeah, specifically bugbears. Specifically, <laughs> say, or we could go the way that we have a clear shot to the spider and where we know he, there's probably nothing in the way, minus the monster that ate the other bugbears that were fleeing. Accurate. And so we'll kind of look at the splint mail, and, or like, what is it, the chain mail you're wearing? Uh, mm -hmm. And the plate armor. It's like, maybe we'll take the Take the long way around. Probably for the best. Okay, can I go up? Of course. Thank you. All right. You once again mount the paladin. Yeah. I said what I said. It's your now birthday. It's of, yeah, it's my birthday. And then you mount the paladin <laughs> and then you hop into the water. So you wetly mount the paladin. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Making your way through the waterway, you will emerge at a large canyon again. It is there that you uh, you manage to defeat those bugbears and doppelgangers, dropping them into the pit, I say again for Amy's benefit. Looking around, there are a pair of stairwells that lead to the west. One immediately to the south of the tunnel that you exit, and then one to the north. It looks like the one to the south has a bisection that carries down through to the tunnel that you were looking up, connecting to that bugbear room. Do we want to leave more space for the bugbears? Like, take the widest path? I don't know. Do you think it's necessary? 
couldn't hurt. I just don't yeah. want I just don't want a pack of bugbears to sneak up behind me with their morning stars again. Right. Yeah, I specifically point, do not want point. that. Let's if anyone's then let's give them a rather wider berth then. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So you head up to the north. All right. Heading northward, you step out of the stream. Your boots sloshing a bit. As you round the northern corner, you are going to be able to see that there is a passageway, a stairwell that leads up to a zigzagging hallway. And just beyond it, you can barely see a little bit, a little bit of candlelight inside of a large room at the end of a hall. You think they're they're excited to see us? They like candles and everything. Oh, maybe it's someone's birthday. Are they setting it's the mood? It's pr you know, it's probably someone's birthday. Or, or it's mood lighting. But I don't know that the mood lighting helps much here. Sindri, perhaps you should go investigate. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Need to interrupt if somebody is actually doing a mood lighting for something. I mean, we probably should. Back later. <laughs> we probably well, should interrupt if they are doing something. Well, uh, maybe they're maybe they're setting mood lighting to to write creepy things. You know, you do that by candlelight too. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go. Okay. <laughs> creepy, spooky rituals and yeah, there you go. Uh, the Precisely. Of murder. Yeah, so yeah, that one. Should probably stop that. Okay. Alright. Sindri, can you give me a stealth roll as you're making your way down the hallway? Guess who didn't roll absolute dog shit for once? It's me! 18! Let's go! Alright. Uh, you make your way down the hall. And as you do, you are going to well, you're going to take a look at what is in front of you. The corridor zigs to the left and then into a large chamber. On the other side, you are going to see six cracked and splintered marble pillars lining the walls of this immense hall. A nine-foot-tall statue of a dwarf seated on a throne with a mighty stone warhammer across his lap occupies the north end. Large green emeralds gleam in his eyes, perhaps the most expensive stones that you have ever seen. As you look in, dust and debris have been swept to one side of the floor. Half a dozen bedrolls and packs are neatly arranged around a rough-built fire pit before the statue. A wooden table stands on the west side of the room between a pair of pillars. As if someone is doing, perhaps, ritual or archaeological work? By the table stand two bugbears. They flank a drow, dressed in black leather armor and robes. The drow clutches a black staff with a carved spider at the top and frowns. Spending a drama bomb. He frowns as you take a step forward and he sees you. Well, seems we have company. I was hoping I wouldn't have to deal with you myself. Pity that it has to end this way. Give me an initiative roll, please. Oh. <laughs> There's the dog shit roll. That's an eight. Oh, that's an eight. He rolled a nine, so. I rolled a two. Yay. All right. Let's roll for some bugbears. Ooh, bugbear. Yeah, okay, of course. All right, checking initiatives right now. I have dog shit rolls. Uh, 10, 9, yeah. 10, 10. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow, all of us. It's all up to you, Anthea. Okay, so, no. Okay, starting at the top of the initiative, we have Anthea. 
Thea with a 21. Oh. Then we have, oh my god, this is the best initiative we've ever had. We have Bug Bear 2. Then we have, uh, his name is, his name is uh, Martin. Uh, and then we have, do, 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 uh, what, uh, Bugbear 1. Then we have the Spider. Then we have a two-way tie at Initiative 8 with Lyric and Sindri. Having uh, a plus five dex modifier, come on. <laughs> did you add it? That's, it's included, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then that is going to be Lady Alessandra. And finally, Carmilla. And uh, since this is our first boss fight of the game, folks, we do have a tradition here at Dork Tales. All right, Sindri, you look seeing the drow there. Um, I'm going to spend another drama bomb to say that everybody else is going to be one round behind. So, uh, bugbear number two is going to take a look at you, uh, who we know, of course, as Martin, is going to go, But should I kill him? Yes. I believe so. Do it. And... Um, with uh with that uh he is gonna the first bugbear is gonna charge you let's see if he can reach you that is gonna be uh he's number two so five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty he can't but he can throw a javelin at you Sindri. and you think on my birthday i'd be able to throw better javelins uh that is going to be a 13 to hit you um oh how does uh uh deflect missiles look yeah, hold on. Do I have to take yep. damage? Uh, okay, nope. so never mind. You have to use your reaction to do it. Oh, fuck yeah, I'm doing that. Uh, yeet. I'm spending a key point and throwing it back at him. Okay, did you look up the rules for it? Uh, let me just pull it up. Sorry. Uh, I just got excited because I don't get to use this very often. Sounds good. Oh, when I'm hit, so I don't get to use it until I'm hit. Oh, okay, never mind. Sorry, I, that was dog That was dog shit. You're right. Uh, hey. All right, so... <laughs> Boom. Um, the um, the javelin flies at you uh, and right past you as he goes, I missed him. I'm going to spend a hurt the more. I'm going to throw another one at you. Another one flies down the hall with a three. <laughs> okay, bugbears number one is going to go, you idiot, this is how you do it. Uh, and is going to charge forward. I'm going to spend a Hurt the More to give him a little bit of extra speed boost, because he's definitely on adrenaline. And he's going to hit you with a Morning Star instead. Ah, there we go. That is a 19 to hit. Yeah, that just hits me. Okay, then uh, please enjoy your 11 points of piercing damage. Great. Good, good start. At least this isn't enough to kill me like it was last time. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, so... he hasn't surprised you. If he'd surprised you, that would have been like 48 damage. Yeah. Yuck. All right. 2d8, 2d6. Ow. All right. Uh, then it is the spider's turn. The spider sees you there and goes, how many else are with you? Tell me this. No? No. Fuck you, dude. Then die. Okay. All right. Uh, he raises his spider, question mark, staff, uh, and is going to fire a poison bolt at you. Uh, that is going to hit you with a 25. Um, oh, there are my rolls. Uh, that's 16 points of poison damage. Yeah, I'm unconscious now. So oh, that's no. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um, you know what? There's a something good happens. I'll let everybody else make me a perception roll. I can't Natural roll above 20. Five. Okay. Can I roll a three? So, Lyric, you are kind of distracted and looking around. You see a bunch of shiny things glinting at the bottom of this chasm, being the only one who didn't go down there. And you're like, huh, what is that down there in that pile of rubble? I should check that later, you think to yourself. Um, and Thea, what are you, would you roll? Oh, sorry, a nine. Okay. And Carmilla. A four. 
a four. All right, so uh, then we are at Lady Alessandra. Lady Alessandra, you have heard what is down the hall. It's trouble. Oh dear. What do you do? Um, I would like to run down the hall. All right, you may totally do that. So, uh, how fast can you go? You go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 30 feet will get you to the second stairwell, and you will see a blast of green poison drop Sindri to the ground. Mm -hmm. Am I still riding, or shall I Oh, yeah, off? you totally are still riding. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, like, no, looking around, no, like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. boy. All right, so you're still surprised. All right, top of the initiative then, unless Lady Alessandra, do you want to do anything else on your turn? I was just double checking, but I think everything I have healing wise is touch. Okay, do you want to prepare like a bonus action spell or anything like that? Or um, use a ranged I'm weapon? Just... Do I take bonus damage on my turn if it's Mel Sassadero? Sorry, it wasn't, what? it was just a poison blast. Okay, cool, sweet. Sorry. <laughs> um, I will. Sorry, I'm just quickly checking that. Yeah, that's touch too. Um, I will shoot this uh bugbear. Because okay, go ahead. Fell. Make me an attack roll against the bugbear. <laughs> so the Norse Foundry dice loves me. That's another okay. nat twenty. That's another nat twenty. Bum bum bum. All right, who are you giving your advantage to? Uh, Anthea is next in the initiative. Uh, Anthea, because I'm also carrying her, so might That's as well. Fair. Okay, make me, uh, give me so damage. So ranged, that was a crossbow, and that was a d8, so... That was a d8. Fourteen. Fourteen points of damage. All right, drawing... Is this a crossbow, you said? Uh, it is a light crossbow. All right, drawing your crossbow off your hip, you're going to take it out and aim, and the bugbear that is looming over Sindri is going to take one right in the chest uh, into its large, hairy pectorals. Um, do you have anything else you want to do on your turn? Uh, I guess bonus action tunnel fighter stance. All right. Just for the heck of it, in case they decide to come running down. Sounds good to me. Next in the initiative, we are back at the top for the non-surprised persons, and we have Anthea. Hello. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello. Um, she's gonna. Oh no! Uh, get up, Sindri. And she's gonna huck a uh, uh, flask at him, uh, and okay. do healing word. <laughs> oh, perfect. All right, give it to me. Uh oh, you know what? I don't actually look at that. Oh. Uh, so healing word I think it's is one d4. It's one d4 plus your wisdom, no. or intelligence for you. Okay. Sorry, I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking clerics for a second. Uh, you I'm always thinking about clerics, guys. Nice. I just love them so much. You know, that's fair. That's fair. Blink. Oh, three plus. Uh, sorry. Totally. Uh, four. So that's seven. Seven points of damage, seven. or seven to attack. Seven healing. Oh, seven oh healing. God! It's healing no, word. Not seven points yeah, of damage. Get Sorry, you can tell I was looking. <laughs> you can tell I was get looking good. up a spell. Oh, perfect. Sorry. Okay, so Sindri, you are going to not even hit the. You're gonna go like you're gonna take a knee and go. Wait a minute, I'm not at a sporting match. Time to get up. <laughs> so that's a bonus action. So I'm just going to shoot with my light crossbow over. All right. Her shoulder. Uh, you have advantage on this attack. If you, oh, amazing. You know, if you choose to use it, yeah. That's right. Yeah, let's use it. Let's go. If you crit and kill this bugbear, I'm going to be so impressed. i am be so happy. I'm so sad. No, that's okay. It was, um, sorry, I had to say that. Uh, 14 plus 4 is going to be an 18. Oh. To hit. Okay, that's going to hit. That's sorry, the way you said it just killed me. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, Six points of damage. Six points of damage. Another arrow is going to peck, is going to pierce the other giant hairy peck. Almost kind of oh. looking like he's got two very big nipple piercings. He's going to look down and go, <laughs> Seriously? Sir, I just got a tattoo under there. <laughs> All right. So, Anthea, that is your turn. Bugbear number two is going to step 
Well, he's gonna start to step over Sindri's corpse and go, Wait, are you alive? Yeah. Boss, this one's still Free alive! Arc. Free arc! You surrender? Yeah. Oh my god. Sindri, he, he looks over you and goes, You surrender, huh? Well... And leaves himself entirely open to an attack because of my nat one on his attack roll. <laughs> Would you like to Johnny Cage him from the floor, I, perhaps? Absolutely. <laughs> Toasty. Uh, not a not a crit, but it is a nineteen to hit. So I oh will, my I god, you just met up this guy for a this. nat twenty with your staff, probably just. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna use the staff and just go. I lied, and then it's like crack him real good. So, okay, give it, um... give it to me. Uh, give me eight points of bludgeoning damage. How do you do it? Oh, I, I'm i gonna hit him in the nuts and then just hit him in the head and just like go <laughs> over. And this is lethal, right? He's He died from this? Yeah. <laughs> Mostly oh, yeah. from shame. Yeah. Okay, um, so... I word, guys. Oh, God. Uh, the other one's gonna go, Martin, no! And Chad Bugbear is going to Take a look at the the men coming down the hallway, or the the group coming down the hallway, and just go, boss. Do I, do I, get in there, you fool, and stop them? And is gonna run forward and take a swing at Sindri. Uh, Sindri, does a fourteen hit you? Does not. Okay, uh, you're gonna matrix dodge back behind it. Morning star that flies at you, um, and the spider is going to take a couple of steps down, look into your hallway, and go, Fools. I prepared for this. And is going to raise his hands, and I need everyone in that hallway to do me a favor. I'm going to spend a Hurt the More to extend this. I need all of you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Notice all that. of us. He can't, can't see us. He can't see Carmilla you. And Lyric. He can't see Carmilla and no. Lyric, but he can he can get everybody oh, uh -huh. inside of a a an elongated cube because I'm spending a drama bomb. All right, um, my I, I'm looking for what do we got on our rolls here? We got Chris. I've seen you have a seventeen. I'm gonna spend my determination to also make it a seventeen. Okay, determination gone. All right. Yep. Christine. I need to use these Norse Foundry dice more often as Alessandra. That's another natural 20. Do the Are thing! You... Okay, what did Squish get? Oh my god, I didn't roll for Squish because I didn't use him last time. ka -ching! He got 11 on the dice. I think they might be feeling sorry for me tonight. I'm feeling sorry uh, for you too. Dex is plus 2 plus proficiency bonus, so that's 11 plus 4 is 15. You know what? This guy's supposed to be threatening. He cast Fairy Fire down the hallway, and it just doesn't work oh. on anyone. He Not just even basically squish. goes, Not even squish. Oh no! He basically, he basically just goes, yeah. "I prepared for this." <laughs> Throws gl glitter into the air, like like he's on Drag Race. <laughs> I can love just... this so much. I gotta insist my party be less funny, please. Laughing hurts. <laughs> oh no. Okay, oh, Lyric or Sindri, who wants to go? We'll give it to Lyric, probably. Lyric, what are you doing? Sure. Uh, Lyric is probably looking at the corner uh, where the um, glitter occurred. You're going to see glitter kind of go poof, around the hallway like a <laughs> sand dune. Uh, I'm not sure what just happened, Camille. Did you see that? Okay, um, and then is going to move forward. And Was that going glitter? To... <laughs> How terrifying! Uh, okay, uh, five and fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Like, what might get be vampires? Warner. <laughs> Blair. Um, in which case, I think I can see from the angle. I think I can possibly just make out the Sindri at the edge. You can yeah. just barely. Uh, how rough does the party, rest of the party, in the hallway look? They don't even look like they have glitter on them. <laughs> like, they just look as boring as normal. I look like I got coated in acid, and that's it. <laughs> oh, I want glitter on me. Not glitter, acid. <laughs> I don't want acid on me, no, that's gross. Uh, what the heck do I want to do here? Um, 
Hold up. Let me just check what I've got available to me because the uh, the the old ill reliable is uh, bardic inspiration. All right. But also, I just want to double check the range of blindness deafness and don't silent. think you can see. You know, you can probably lean around the corner. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a couple that it, it. I don't remember which one requires just perception range and which one mm. is line of sight. I know sleep is is just like within range, but huh? Okay. Uh, okay, and then oh no, that one requires sight. Okay, and blindness deafness is if in range that I can see. But silence is fine. This guy's yammering away. I can probably hear him, right? Yeah, you can hear him. You definitely hear him going <laughs> ah. Okay, and he's probably <laughs> casting spells, right? It sounds You're pretty sure that's what the glitter is. Cool. Um, I would like to silence a 20-foot radius around him in that general area. Okay, make me a perception roll to aim this pretty well. Well, you actually can see just... him from this angle if you lean around the corner. Shit. Yeah. You can. Uh, All right. So any... you want him at the center? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, he'll be immune to thunder damage, but he's also deaf and can't hear us talking. And we, any casting spells that require verbal components are impossible. So it's a 20 foot square. So four by four. 20 foot radius sphere. Oh, sphere. Sphere. I don't know why. I so 40 square. foot diameter. All right. I'm basically blocking off most of the room, I think. And um, then I'm going to toss a bardic inspiration over to Sindri. All right, Sindri, you feel so inspired, and you're just going to, like, you're going to look over and just see, like, the worst swearing that you've ever seen an elf do, but you can't hear it. It's just... <laughs> and it's your turn, yeah, I think you're said something along the lines of just like, oh, be quiet, you waste of villainy. Oh, hold on, hold on. I know his line. I prepared for this, and then I breathe fire on him uh, just down the hallway. <laughs> What's your range on that? Uh, it is, hold on, I might not be in my, in range. It'd be just tr great if I was, but uh, it's a 20-foot line. Or, so, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. It's not quite, unless you decide basically just to spin around the bugbear and do it. Uh, that would be funny, but I am just, I'll just be patient and actually uh, start my turn, use my bonus action to give myself patient defense and not make my martial arts attack this turn. Uh, right. So I'm going to skip the cheat step uh, and okay. then just make a uh, my quarter staff attack. All right, do it. 20 to hit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll hit. Uh, so nine points of bludgeoning damage. Nine so points of bludgeoning Sindri damage. Having... <laughs> Having been very seriously hurt by bugbears again. You crank him with your staff? Uh, yes, and then I spin it around patiently and uh, kind of wait for everyone else to catch up. Nice. And how much damage did you do to him, man? Oh, you did nine points. That. You did nine points. They did nine points of damage, yeah. All right, do wait patiently. All right, Lady Alessandra, it's your turn again. All right. Uh, I think Alessandra is going to move up okay and so you stepping him. stepping past the bugbear it is eerily calm and quiet where you are cool all right I'm so go ahead and make me make possible. me an attack roll that is going to be an 18. an 18 is going to hit because they didn't give me shield <laughs> Uh, that is going to be five points of damage. Five points of damage. All right. Your arrow is going to slice into his robes, and he is going to... You, you expect to make a noise, but you're not quite sure what type of noise, because it's very silent where you are. Uh, any other thing else you want to do? Yeah, I'll just go into Tunnel Fighter again. Uh, so now, can ready. you use Tunnel Fighter if you don't have a weapon drawn? It just says that you can enter defensive stats that last till the start of your next turn. While in it, you can make opportunity attacks without using your reaction. So I could conceivably just unarmed. Oh, you just bop one hand off the crossbow, and punch, punch him. Yeah. Hmm. Something like that works. All right, Carmilla, what do you do? I am just gonna 
run forward, I guess, because I'm still way out here. Um, you could action surge to, punt, to pump a couple of arrows in him. Well, I'll have to... I'll have to action surge to get around the corner because I'm mm. so far away. So, because I'm, 20, I, I, if if you let me actually, like no, you can totally just five, corner, 10, I can make it there. 15, 20, 25. So you get thirty to get around the corner from where you were. Yeah, I was gonna if, if I was gonna say if you let me just parkour that corner, then yes, I can. <laughs> so yeah, that's perfect. You, you're just gonna use your uh, ADHD okay. cornering, just perfect. Yeah, exactly. Know? Uh. Yeah, so we'll draw a bow while doing that. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to try to shoot between everybody. Um, okay, I'm going to give him a slight bonus to his AC 16. because of uh, not cheating your friends. Slight cover. Yeah, he's good. All right, what you got? All right, and all my... my um, uh, fighter things are back. They are. <laughs> Whatever those superiority dice, that's the word. It's true. They are superior. Okay. Uh so that is gonna be a uh eighteen to hit. That is a hit. Okay, I'm gonna use a superiority die and I'm going to use Does anyone wanna get closer to him? Uh, yeah. Sindri does, Alessandra does. But I also don't want to get I also don't want to get an attack opportunity against me, so Oh again because of the um the bugbear. Bug bear. Right. Okay. In that case, maybe what I'll just do is do distracting strike and then whoever gets to him next will have advantage. That works. Okay. Uh and then so that'll be a D eight for the longbow and a d8 for my superiority die mm. and that's not spectacular but that's okay plus four so 11 damage blood smears his face as your arrow punches into him he looks pretty badly hurt i will action surge and get his ass oh that's not great uh no i'm not gonna do it that's only an 11. all right so it was a it was a close shot attempt though. another one and it will go wait flying use distracting <laughs> shot it, it, it's someone other than me oh does it have to be someone other than you you can expend one spirit to distract the creature giving your allies an opening the next attack roll against the target by another by an attacker other than okay. you has advantage okay so yeah. you're gonna fire two arrows one of them is going to punch deep into his stomach a wonderful shot though wonderful like you Krista and Anthea yeah. we are at the top of the initiative oh gosh okay um this bugbear is really close to me and um yeah. You know, I think, uh, hold on a second. I just wanted to look, see if I wanted to do it. You know, uh, I never use it, but I have a spear on my character sheet. Is spear, spear's not close range though, is it? It can be. Can it be? Can it be? I'm trying to stab it. The spear slung on my back. All right, go ahead. It's a strength based <laughs> attack. Let's go. Oh yeah, that's why I don't use it. But I am proficient with spears so there's that all right do it okay Ka 15. uh 15 is that your final answer i use my determination someone bought you another one yeah I, oh i said i'm gonna use my determination oh i thought you said you used it all right no. uh, well, I so did, but... uh, that's gonna be a hit then yes let's go all right, so if you're holding that two-handed, that's a D8. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, just... Plus your strength mod, which okay. I'm sure is very high. Oh, yes. It's a huge one. Does she have the high ground for being on top of Elisandra? Oh! Only more yeah. high ground. I, uh, I rolled a seven, so that's going to be eight points of piercing damage. All right, you are going to stab deeply into him. He is definitely wounded at this point. 
uh, and is going Squish. to snarl in pain. And uh, Get him. seeing that he is surrounded, he's going to take a swing at you, Anthea. Oh, okay. Can Squish? Oh, okay. oh yes, of course That's Squish it. can. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, Dr. Squish, it's your turn. That's okay. He'll do it with disadvantage, but he'll try to aim at him, too. Okay. Ka -cha. Two. Oh, man, that was a 17 and a 3. That um, three's not going to work, unfortunately. It's not. So it pings the wall behind who, Hey! Prepare to die! Oh, I'd rather not. Well, good, good, too bad! And uh, he is going to swing with a 17 to hit you. Oh, yeah, yep. All right, if that hits you, that is going to be... Boop! Oh, God, really? Four points of piercing damage because the DM can only roll two ones on 2d8. How do yes. you say in Goblin, womp womp? It, womp womp. No, no, that was barely a single womp. <laughs> that was wimp wimp. Uh -huh. All right, so you get like a little scratch on your arm as it goes, Ruff! Oh, oh, that still stings though. Okay, bugbear one is dead. Uh, and the spider is inside of a cone of silence. Uh, and is going to look around with a bit of fear. And what can he do? He is very quiet. He will... Uh, that does that. 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 Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, well, uh, it's been swell. Uh, but, uh, yeet! Uh, he is going to take off running to the south. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30... Uh, and is going to make it to the door and cast invisibility. And he vanishes at the door. Lyric, it is your turn. What do you do? He left my zone of, of silence, right? He did. That's what we're saying? He did. Well, I think I don't... I probably can't see that. So I think Lyric's just going to approach to see what's happening. All right, go ahead. So, rounding the corner, you are going to come and see a very wounded bugbear scratch Anthea. No, no, that's horrible. And also, I'd see no uh, uh, evil wizard spider person. You do not, anywhere. but you see a pair of open doors to the south swinging wide. Hmm. 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 You can do make a perception we know roll. if he if he took anything that belonged to any of our friends or allies? No. Do we know that? No, he didn't. You, okay. do you, do, you don't know that. Okay. Cool. 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 All good. Um, but I will do that perception while you said. Hmm. It'd be great if perception was actually something I was good at. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an okay roll. That's a 19. Uh, you're going to see a trail of blood leading to the south. Hmm. From a I pretty see. gnarly couple of shots that he took. Good news. There's a trail. Um, and she's going to uh, break concentration on silence because there's not much point holding it up. And uh, I think is going to look at this bugbear, and I think is going to throw try and throw a dagger at it. All right, go ahead. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uh huh. It's been a second since I did the throwing of the daggers. Uh. Hmm, not great. That is a... Twelve? Twelve is not That's going to 12. hit. The dagger is going to fly clear and clatter across the floor behind him. I think she's just kind of going to have, like, no expression. Just be like, hmm. I really thought that was going to work. Oh, well. And is gonna, uh, look at her allies and just kind of shrug. And is gonna bardic inspiration. Let's give it to, give it to Alessandra. 
All right, Alessandra has Bardic Inspiration now. Sindri, you are up. Uh, hi. Hey, bud. Uh, and we're just going to go for non-lethal. Uh, oh, okay. uh, and that's another 19 to hit uh, on, on the die, so... Okay, uh, yeah. That's going to be 12 points of bludgeoning damage. How do you do it? Just going to, like, grab him and clock him against the wall. Oh, thanks for not killing me. He'll say as he falls to the ground unconscious. Uh, uh, and Sindri will uh, be like, listen, I really want to run after him, but I'm still very badly hurt. Uh, so Sindri will uh, kind of start making his way, but he's not going to get too far away because he doesn't want to get fucking bodied by something. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's going <laughs> to hang out here beside Lady Alessandra just kind of okay, like ducking. get lined up to where the blood is ducking by one of the pillars all right sounds good um and lady alessandra you're up this is the blood trail leads south to the open doors okay uh she's gonna go down to the open doors then okay and see if she can spot that blood trail got pointed out, right? It did, yeah. Uh, she's going to see if she can spot it continuing. Uh, it stops just on the other side of the doors. Okay. So this, potentially he either stood there or he's fudged off. Is there a bigger puddle by any chance? No, no it has been too quick. The, the puddle would not have been larger, but there are dribbles on the door where it looks like a bloody handprint touched it just seconds ago. Okay. Um, how does this work? One sec, I just want to double so check if, something. If you're attacking blind, you have disadvantage. Do I have to hit? Oh, I have to hit. Okay. So basically, what I want you to do is, if you're attacking, I want you to pick which square you're attacking. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any area of effect. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, all right. Um, roughly where does this, it's just kind of like right between the doors or on one side or the other? Basically on one side or the other is where is where you can reach right now and attack. I just meant where, like, I saw the last blood drops type of the thing. The last blood drops are right at the open door. Okay. So basically, you can pick the the spot on the on your left, mm -hmm. or the spot or the right. on your right. And we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, your left and your right facing south. Okay, I'm gonna try the one that's off to the left. So the I one think. directly beneath you? No, the next, the one over. Left, if you're looking, thinking north. Okay. Sounds good. Because that's the way the map's up, right? All right. Make me an attack roll. And this is disadvantage, right? It is. Okay. Let me find the other die. Uh, that is... I have pulled Hugh in order to do this. Okay. As well. I'm trying to take a melee attack. Uh, that is 19. 19, you smash your axe into the wall, guiding it through a, a, an empty space, and next to you, you are going to hear, <laughs> wrong choice. And... Whoa, that took forever. Uh, I have... Ooh, I don't know if this is going to hit you, actually. I have a 19 to hit you. With advantage. You do not hit me. A blast of poison fires out of the spot directly to the south of you. At point blank range, it almost hits you, but you manage to pivot out of the way at the last second as the light burst forth. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else you want to do? Oh my god, you could do Tunnel Fighter. Well, you have to see them, don't you? You have to see them. Uh, you does to... breaking your attack uh, break invisibility or is it greater invisibility? That's a good question. Because he did attack. 
He did attack. He did. He did. Guess, guess, uh, yeah, you know what? Um, yep. Ooh, woo. <laughs> can you tell yeah, i've had i've had a really long day and i was uh, just like ah i'll do something neat and then it was definitely like, tunnel fighter <laughs> okay uh hmm. carmilla <laughs> oh my god you can make it and shoot him in this round <laughs> oh my god yeah i'm just gonna Try to run 30, around 20, the corner 30, if I can 30. make that distance. Uh, no, can, I can't quite. You can make it right to the corner, and you can... You're just... I can't. You can if I spend the I something good have... happens to give you five more feet of movement. Is it worth it? Watch me roll real bad. Um, if everyone is okay with that, then I'm I'm good with it. Oh, yeah. Real cool. You can do it like a cool slide to get in there. Yeah, you got to do a slide on blood while grabbing it and go like you got to. Okay. So like, so I'm going to take narrative control for you because I know you want me to. You're going to run and there's a bunch of bugbear blood and you're going to slide, but you're going to leave a pair of fingers out to kind of like draw a finger and you're going to go hua, hua, like war paint on your cheeks and then draw on fire because you're a vampire. Sounds just like her. Or you just yeah. do that like, like, Tom yes, Cruise exactly. slide across the, the wood marine floor. that she is. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. Semper Fi. <laughs> that's, that's Semper it. Fangs. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what happens. Whoop out. Uh, that's going to be a 21. Oh, God damn it. Okay, roll damage. <laughs> okay. Because they didn't and just give in the case, um, uh, Just in case, I'm going to give. Um, a distracting where? strike? Sindri, where are you? Uh, he's oh, just you beneath you, you under hiding my... around a post. <laughs> it was right where the bobble in the, like, spread in Roll20 showed up. I <laughs> couldn't see him. Uh, I'll give... I'm going to use the superiority dice mostly just for the additional damage, just to be safe. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But I will use um, maneuvering... Actually, no, I'll use distracting strike just in case it doesn't kill him, and then okay. uh, someone else can hit him. Uh, well, that's going to be a 17. All right, um, he fires his shot and prepares to do another unload directly into Alessandra, raising his spider staff. How do you do it? Uh, yeah, she's just gonna sort of run forward and slide in and just like, what's our, what's our order of operations? Who's in, oh, every, it's just, you guys are just in a stack. Um, yeah. uh, yeah, she's just going to sort of come around the corner and just as a, there's like that tiny window between Wall and Alessandra and it's just going to like <laughs> trying desperately not to clip her hair again. The arrow is going to go through Alessandra's hair uh, and Perfect. just right into the center of his throat. Nice. And I see I love the way that this looks, too, because she was leaning forward to hack where she thought he was. So you basically yeah. just had that like shot between her between her shoulder blades as she was leant over. Yeah. And he like so he takes it right at the throat and is going to stumble backwards onto the ground. And we are out of initiative rounds. Oh, what a good shot. Please. Thank you. Please, I, I, I can take you. Oh, he clutches the blood that's pouring out of his throat. I can, I can, I can show you what I found here. I, 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 I serve a trial. We do something about that. You, okay. I, uh, Anthea will hop off of Alessandra's back. Um, hmm. Can I have some rope, please? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cindy will walk over. Actually, can you tie him up, please? Yeah. And she'll start dabbing, um... Um... Yeah. A... A, a healing word on him. So You're gonna use on. a healing word on him? Okay. Yeah, yeah, healing word. Or just to, like, stabilize. I, don't, I can't really stabilize any other... Oh, medicine! Can I medicine to stabilize instead? You can attempt a medicine check to stabilize him. Let's From try. an arrow in the throat. Yep. Hmm? 
I have selves. Do it. Put some put some Bengi <laughs> on it. That'll help. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Ye old right. tiger well, ball. Little little bit of neosporin right there. Uh, <laughs> that could have been worse, but it you know could have been better. Uh, let me just see. Fourteen. <laughs> A 14, that is gonna be enough to stabilize him. Yes, oh, so the thanks. spider lies down. And he's gonna pass out in your arms oh. as you smear the salve. Oh, drop him. <laughs> well, Dear, I'm not strong enough for the shit. <laughs> we can ask him questions later. Yeah, he's not dead. Oh. Sindri, you're looking a little rough around the edges. Um, one moment, and and Lyric's gonna walk over and is gonna do a cure wound, like smack a slap of cure wounds on him. Beautiful. And, Thank you. And and see, uh, I I wish to trust your judgment, but we just slaughtered the people working for him and did not save them. Why are we letting him live? He is a passed out. We can kill him now, but he was going to tell us something. I also didn't kill that last bugbear. Oh, there you go. If but you want to, you He's responsible for him. both of Gundren's brothers being dead. I mean, we can kill him later. Wait, hold on. He's going to tell us something. We've only found... We've only also found one of Gundren's brothers. Oh, I thought we found both of them. Nope, just one. No. Oh, sorry. Never mind then. Well, you can decide. But... I think I think Carmilla would probably assume at this point. If they killed one, they probably kill both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That seems that seems logical. Why wouldn't they kill both? We we can also bring him back to town for justice. Mm hmm. I think that's a good idea. We could I feel... put him to let his previous compatriots deal with him. Now that they're you know having to reform from his influence. People like they him don't reform. To say. Death could be the no, 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 not him. Out, Them. They might take him out themselves. Then so, it's not our problem. Does anybody want to take a look around the room? or? Well, this is D&D. &D. Who wants to loot the bodies? All right. Uh, can I... Uh, do I recognize the statue of the like the big dwarf? Looking at the big dwarf, you can see that the statue in the room depicts Dumathion, the dwarven god of mining, who you actually would know. Not personally, but distantly. You were pen pals once. Um, or maybe you just have been to a lot of mining guilds. Um, if you're proficient in religion, you recognize him, period. Um, and Sindri will recognize him because of his background. The statue is beautifully carved, and its eyes are these gorgeous emeralds that are worth enough to buy a house in Phandalin. Each. As well, anybody who is quickly checking the spider will find that they have a potion of healing, a spider staff that for sure looks like a spider and not... I think a, definitely not a louse. He also has an iron key with a head shaped like an anvil. Um, over on the wooden table, you see that there is a leather sack that is full of stuff. Uh, and on top of that table, which is where the bugbears were, were standing at the northern corner of the room, there is like a, a huge amount of papers, notes, and maps. Mm, well, those look interesting. I think... Lyric's going to happily just scrounge those up and start rifling through them. All right. The table is strewn with notes and maps showing the spider's efforts at exploring the mine so far. Um, in the crevice, or the crevasse, that you were looking down at earlier, Lyric, you see that there's a mark kind of near where you were looking that says something buried, question mark. Hmm. So they, you, last game when Lyric was on autopilot, there were bugbears doing excavation work down there. So there could be something cool down there to check out. However, you will also see that it looks like throughout the excavation of this cave, it looks like there were some things collected. Inside of that sack, you are going to see 190 Electrum pieces, 130 gold pieces, nine 
small gemstones worth a handful of gold each, probably, a dwarven ale mug made of hammered electrum, and 15 platinum pieces. Sorry, how much electrum was it? Uh, 15. Oh, pardon me. Uh, no, electrum was 190. 190. Does anybody want this electrum? Um, well, we can we can sort it up back in town. And Please. does the mug look like one of uh, Gunroot's? Like, does it have anything on it in Dwarven? Uh, yeah, it has on the very bottom of it, it says um, bottoms up or the equivalent Dwarven expression. It looks older than... Uh, it looks like something that, like, Gundren's grandpa might have drank out of. So not not like his or his brother's. No, it doesn't look like. Uh, let's, let's all sort this out back in town. I kind of like this mug, though. I don't feel like we should touch the statue. All right. I feel like those... God. I feel like Gundren wouldn't be pleased if we carved the eyes off the god of mining in his new his brand new mine. I could mm. see that going poorly. That and I don't want to. It would probably be better to not desecrate any statues of gods. As a general rule, yes. Mm. I, I I would agree. That makes sense. Uh, we passed a doorway, hey? Uh-huh. Can I go uh absolutely check, check that out? So, so the hallway through which you charge down to fight the spider, uh there is a small room off to the side that kind of looks like like a vestibule or or priest quarters. Um trying the door, you'll see that it is locked. Does the iron key with an anvil on it open this door? Y yes it does. You run back, grab that from work, run back. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, with a click, uh, the door will open, and um, you'll see that dusty draperies of red and gold adorn the walls of this room, which also contain a bed and a brazier. Once upon a time, this was priest's quarters. Now, it is a cell for a badly disheveled dwarf that lies bound and unconscious on the stone-cold floor. They hadn't even bothered to put him on the bed that was there. You will recognize with some difficulty the face of Nundro, Rockseeker. Although it's hard, it's hard to make that comparison. His eyes are swollen shut. His mouth is so blistered, it looks like he's been kicked by a bull. He's obviously been beaten and tortured. Oh, uh, that's not good. Uh, hello, are you, are you conscious? Are you there? No more. Nundro. No? Okay. No more. Um, just the... No, 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 we're not here to, we're here to, to, to help, uh, save you, and, um, uh, Lyric is going to cast a cure wounds. <laughs> Ow. Gundren's yeah, brother looks a lot nine. like him, uh, only with, um, very long hair, um, kind of braided in, with these, like, golden clasps, and he's gonna look up at you and go... Howdy. I didn't expect to be rescued. Hey, Nandro. Good to see Is you. That... Hey, it's Sin and Sindri. Yeah. <laughs> he made it. Um, Sindri will help pull him up and start unbinding him. Oh, thank you. That... What happened to the spider? He's a little, um, tied up at the moment. There Please tell me I can get a thinking. kick in. Oh, absolutely. That's not a problem at all. Oh, he's been Alessandra torturing. Alessandra will have moved the spider into the center of the room, just so that it's harder for him to get away if he tries. Look. Permila uh, will he, help if she's doing that. He's been torturing me for days, weeks maybe. He's been missing for a few weeks now. Well, that explains that. What happened? We found Wayback Cave. He, uh, 
he was looking for the Spellforge. I don't think that place still exists no more, though. Well, we ain't found it through our looks. But then again, we didn't get a scope of the place out too much before he got a hold of us. Where's Gundren? Gundren's safe. He's back in Fendolin. Well, he better be safe. He has all my stuff. And he owes me money. Yeah, he'll do that. What happened to Tharden? Is he around here? Uh, Sindri will continue in Dwarven. Tharden didn't make it. I'm not sure who killed him, but he didn't make it. I had a feeling the way they was talking. We have his remains. We'll see them safely back to Phandalin. I appreciate that. I have a personal item of his. Um, she'll rummage through her stuff. Here. No, I, thank it's you. The necklace. That's real sweet of you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm surprised his pretty cloak didn't protect him. He spent a lot of money on that. Oh, we have that too. Hold on. Huh? Pretty sure Anthea still had it. No, nah, you uh, all, you all rescued okay. me. You take that. It's, it's a, it's a cloak of good luck. At least it's supposed to be. I guess he spent all his of. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. No, don't be loss. sorry. I mean. I don't want to say it is what it is, but. You got him. And we're going to see justice is done. I'm going to save my anger for the trial. There you go. Meanwhile, back in the main area, Alessandra and Carmilla drag the spider's unconscious body to the center of the room. Are you saying or doing anything as you're doing this? Is anything happening? I, I think Carmilla is pacing and trying to not stand too close to the spider because she's a little f afraid that she's going to end him. I think otherwise Alessandra will just stand over him with her weapon drawn ready in case he wakes up and makes a break for it. Mm -hmm. He looks like he'll probably be unconscious for a while. Yeah, she's going to try and pay attention. Cause she doesn't want him escaping justice. Also, she's mildly concerned about how willing it sounded Lyric and Anthea were to just killing him afterwards. And she's like, well... <laughs> Would have been one thing in the midst of battle, but now he's a downed enemy, and we should take him back for trial since we didn't kill him in the heat of battle. Yeah, just waiting. All right. I'm just waiting. Okay. So, Lyric, what are you doing? Well, Lyric followed as soon as 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 uh, Sindri um, mentioned that he th knew thought he had an idea what the key would do or mm. took it. Lyra came over and was just, like, helping over there. So she's just assisting in helping Nundro, like, I guess, clean up, get oriented, or whatever she can do. You guys got a way out of here. We found a way in. Probably will get us out, too. That sounds good. This place is crawling with brug bears and all sorts of so, uh, gobagoos. Uh, we've noticed. Do we want to go out the same way? Mm. Probably not a bad idea. Uh, our mission was to get you out. And kill the spider if we could. Fair. Now. Let's, all right, do you feel like you can walk? Yeah, I do. Okay. I don't suppose you know what they were excavating down in that crevasse over there? Uh, all, all sorts of all sorts of stuff. I heard, I heard that um, through the door they were talking about magical items or something like that. the The spell forge really? back in the day used to be able to channel the latent magic of these caverns to a chant, uh, dwarven arms and gnomish gadgets, oh. so something like that. 
So there's possibly a whole trove of magical items down there. That's Maybe. pretty interesting. I mean, I'm just gonna rest if you wanna check it out and you feel comfortable. I, I sort of do want to go look at it. I don't know about the rest of you, but... I don't know, when I tried to decide to do something on my own last time, people got angry about it. Well, then and come then with they me, then you're not doing this on your own. And I just don't understand people. That's okay. People are strange. Oh. Really, you're delightful, so it's not you, it's all them. Okay. It is pretty much me. Uh, Sindri will <laughs> look over and... We, we found Nundro, uh... And then Thea and Lyric want to go investigate. I mean, it's a what possibility. It? It's my, probably a little bit dangerous, though. So we should probably make a team effort of it. If we mm -hmm. want to do this. Well, we're all here. And Nundra we needs to rest a moment. We are here. Versus going and trying to come back and having to deal with all that again. She's so I really like, don't want to come back through it. here. I really don't want to go back through, so we should do it now while we're here. Carmilla, Alessandra, are you okay with this idea? Like, he's like sticking his head out the door and I can... I suppose we have, uh, we have to maintain the prisoner at the same time, but... If we, we'll just, uh, bring him down to the pit with us. Put him beside some heavy rocks and if he tries to make a break for it, just push him over. That room was locked to hold a prisoner, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could we just lock him in? Yes, yeah, let's just swap yeah. Sure. Just take everything off of him and tie him extra tight and leave him in there. And check the bed for anything else that's not gonna... No lock picks or little mm -hmm. cute little treats that have been scurried away in there. Oh, no, I doubt he would have been using it as a prison, but... Probably not. Mm. Just being thorough. I'll just set up a something on the outside so that he doesn't get very far if he does open the door. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be like real weak when he wakes up. Mm -hmm. I can stay and watch him. Very far. Well, you're quite beaten up yourself. Uh, no, no. Not to undermine your strength. I'm sure you're I, very strong. I, you know what? I'm comfortable but... with my masculinity. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm also, glad. I've had the shit kicked out of me for about two, three weeks now. The fact that I'm standing says a lot about my, uh, my manhood. Personhood? Let's go with personhood. Dwarfhood, Dwarfhood is also uh, worse. You can give him that swift <laughs> kick if he does wake up. Did you take that arrow out and of his- And I can mm. set up some traps <laughs> on the outside so that he doesn't get very far. But be careful. Um, and uh, Lyric is absolutely intending to, like, set up a bear trap using, like, her song of creation. Perfect. Just so that there's, yeah. Does, or whichever trap seems Does anyone perfect. have a spare, like, crossbow? I mean, I don't use mine. Here. Perhaps we leave him with a weapon, and if you I'm make sure that you stay on the other side of the room... Oh, I'm not going to get anywhere near him. And uh, I'd appreciate if we bind and gag him, too. And blind him. You know, with, why don't we like just... A... Well, why don't we tie him to the bed? Yeah. Mm. All right. Mm. Here, give me a sec. Mm -hmm. You can easily do so. He's bound to the bed, and, and uh, Nundro takes, uh, takes an overwatch position with his crossbow giving you a chance to go and explore around a little bit around that crevasse. It's a large, large hole in the ground that you fought a little bit ago. In this collapsed cavern, this, this wide rift fills about half of it. A stream pours from the, the west wall, which is what you use to enter the room, and then secured to iron stakes along the western edge of the rift are several ropes leading to the chasm floor, about 20 feet down. It takes you not much time to get down that rope repelling down the side. And once you do, anybody who wants to can make me a perception check to mill around some of the rubble. Thirteen. Thirteen? Five. I yeah. am not perceived. 
16. 16? No, 15. sorry, I lied. 15, 15. Squish may make a roll as well. Oh, yeah. What Squish's uh, proficiency Oh, bonus? my God, it was almost a 19, but I only rolled a 9. Oh, okay. I think that's just a 13. All right, so poking around the rubble at the bottom, uh, you will take a look around and find that there is... It's a bunch of rubble at this point. There's not terribly much down here. But he seemed pretty convinced. You're about a half hour of poking around. Maybe a little longer. 40 minutes. Do you want to try again? It might take another hour of searching. Mm, Eric's kind of annoyed that she didn't find anything. Okay. Give me one more then. Sorry, Sindri, what were you saying? I mean, we're here. You're we're here. here. That's even worse. Roll a four. So it's a five. I guess Perfect. it's a six. Six, yeah, because I uh, got my oh, jacket. Oh, Squish got too. better, though. Can you, can you give someone Bardic 18. for this? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you could. I can. An ability check. Uh, I think you, so. You can give yourself Bardic. I don't think you can. I thought you could only give it to your allies. Uh, one hmm. All right. So, um, taking a peek around, you're going to kick some of the rubble, uh, looking around, and Lady Alessandra taking a final kick around at the end of the second hour, when you're just finally getting a little fed up with this place. Buried in a, a little bit of shallow rubble at the bottom of the rift, just at the very far north, almost where that stream winds out of the cavern, you're going to see... A skull looking up at you. Well, I found a skull. Oh. And it looks like it's attached to a skeleton that you could unearth if you wished. She will kneel down and start kind of brushing at it with one hand. One hand holding her axe. Just Sounds in good. case this thing comes to life. Looking down, the, the skeleton... The skeleton was wearing... Um, Ringmail that has since deteriorated and almost completely rusted off. You can only see the skeleton of a dwarf with an old beard that has somehow survived the ravages of time, kind of almost deteriorated down to cobweb length. However, as you are poking through, you are going to unearth that beneath the ringmail, crushed by falling stone, you are going to see a pair of pristine, if very dirty, gauntlets. Uh, she'll fish them out because that's odd that they survived when the ringmail didn't. So it probably means they're magical. Nice. And as you are... As you are there, um, you are going to hear a noise coming further down the hallway. It's actually, you know what, give me a perception roll, everybody. Which hallway? Is it the one where the bugbear went down and got horribly eaten? E Let me double check the map. Or at least that's what it sounded like. Krista, no! Uh, no, this will... Actually, yes, the, uh, no, it will be the northern hallway. All right. I assume I'm over at the base of the... Crevasse yeah. there. Okay. Everybody who's down here can make me a perception roll. Yes, I got 19. Krista got a 2. Amy got an 8. Uh, Lady Alessandra got a 17. Uh, Anthea got a 5. Squish got a 19. So, as you are there, I'm going to spend my drama bomb for this to happen, by the way, because it's more fun you are going to hear the sound of something kind of slowly drift, drifting into view, a little bit of falling rubble, and you're going to hear, Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Hello? What are you doing? Hail and well met. 
Uh, hey, Halen, well met for you as well. Who are you? Me? Um, yeah. As you are saying this, you all realize that your voice is echoing, and this voice is not echoing, because you're all hearing it inside of your head. Oh. Uh, I'm just, just a spectator here to watch and keep an eye on things. Are you another one of those nothings? What? Oh. Oh, heaven forbid, no. No. Are you here to pillage Where this? Where are you? I'm up here in this corridor looking down at you. I think Lyric's looking up. <laughs> and as you look up, you are going to see rounding the corner a giant floating creature about four feet in diameter a green ball with four eye strokes protruding Ooh. from a central mass two on each side the center of the body is a large eye that stares at you wow it looks you know what? Like eyes a... you have oh thank you, you this uh make Can me an arcana roll i bet you see really Ooh. well could i also make an arcana roll yeah anybody who wants see if to it's can. in my G is for um, whatever book. Yep, Christine can roll with advantage because it's an aberration. Oh. Sindri is horrified. Arcana oh, roll that a was 22. Awful. Nice. Actually, was something okay. Uh, Arcana dirty roll of 12. 20. Dirty 20? Um, well, it didn't lie to I you. I had a 22. You had a 22? Damn straight. Yeah. Um, all right, so look into this. I have an 11. Um, yeah. I have... Okay, so... Um, and Thea... Squish is going to know what this is. Oh. Apparently. Because he rolled a 19. Um, Did he? No, on his perception oh, check. That was oh, the that perception. Was, oh, yeah, yeah. Perception no, he check. didn't, okay. didn't roll Arcana. All right, sounds good. Uh, so <laughs> anybody who gets above a 16 uh, is going to recognize that he's telling the truth. Uh, he is a spectator. A type of beholder uh, that is much less powerful, but oftentimes just as... Well, fairly dangerous. Uh, it looks at you and smiles, opening its large mouth with its lolling tongue and very venom-like teeth. Are you here to pillage? <clears throat> Are you here to pillage the um, the cave and the 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 spell forge? <gasps> what big teeth what? you have! Will you oh, do you well, spell forge? Are. Actually, is here. Yes. Huh. Why wouldn't it be? it's been lost yeah, for years look. that according to our history wait no it hasn't the mine's still in use that's why you're here you're miners well, we just got here though look we haven't been using it so what you came here to Mostly take to over the mine then the None of you are dwarves, though. Which one of you is uh, is a representative of the ones who own the cave? My employers. Uh, Sidri will speak in dwarven. I, sp I speak for the rock speakers, current owners of the mine. Hmm. Make me a deception check. Or persuasion, okay. <laughs> actually, because technically it's not a lie. Uh, that's a 15, and if I fail, I can re-roll it. So he's going to squint four out of five of his eyes at you. Well met. Well met. Rock speaker, speaker. All right. It actually um, sounds better. In, it does sound better in Dwarven. Yeah, it kind of does. Look, am I allowed to go home yet? I was hired here for 101 years and it's it feels like a lot longer than that. Wow. What? Wait, when, when did your contract end? Realms? 100, uh, well, it depends. Is this... He'll what, count what back. Year did you... uh, he'll list off a year that is about 582 years ago. Oh, oh you're please. doing overtime. What? Yeah, I was forced to come here from another plane. Like, I, I, I didn't mean to be here. Um, nope, you're released. No. Oh. To... Actually, uh, before we, uh, we've released you, can we perhaps 
uh, recontract you for a shorter, much shorter period of time in the matter of like hours instead of days, instead of years, instead of centuries. Mm. Is this about That's the undead? I've been handling the uh, undead trying to get into the forge for apparently a lot longer than I was supposed to. Oh, where are the undead coming from? Oh, they just come from no, everywhere. There's a lot of dead in here. I just assumed that they were oh. sent by an evil necromancer. Uh, I mean, it's no problem for me. I just go, Zort, and he's going to shoot a ray out of one of his eyes that's going to, like, just ah. smash into the into the side of the rocks. <laughs> oh, my. Like that. Well, that's Do quite you know where this... Where the spell forge is. Very convenient. Oh, I guess as the correct uh, mine holders, I should probably take you there. Yes. Um, if please you would. do. Yeah. Well, uh, sure. Well, uh, follow me this way. Uh, look. Um. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Do you have a name? Oh. Um. In common. Or if you just put it in our brains. Hmm. It seems uh, rude not to introduce dangerous. yourself. Fair, um, fair I'm enough. Leary. I'm Jeff. Um, oh. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Common mm. name. Alessandra really? is, I think, experiencing one hell of a moral dilemma. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm Anthea, and this is Squish. That thing is terrifying. Uh, Squishes? Yes, actually, he's become quite terrifying. He really was just a potion a, 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 a few short days ago, but... Um, and you let him go bad? Well, I think it's actually an Im improvement. He's oh. enhanced, and... Um, Possibly Usually, this thing I say with my eyes, enhance, and his eyes get bigger. Enhance. Ooh, that's that make... terribly convenient. It's very convenient, really. Uh, mm. Sure. Uh, well, if you're coming to the spell forge, I can take you down this way, or the forge of spells. I think spell forge sounds cooler, so I'm gonna call it that. That sounds good. Okay. Let's go. It's a good uh, name. Anyway. It's a good name. So the undead are coming from some type of dead wraith or something that kind of lives in the 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 the, the forge area. Been trying to kill me for I guess hundreds of years now. Kind of a what's the word in common? And he's just gonna broadcast like the literal definition of dickhead into your minds. Oh, <laughs> I can never oh, unthink I knew that. that. I knew. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, I'm terribly sorry. Can you give us one moment to confer as colleagues? I've given a lot of moments to this mind. Can you can you talk while you walk? Oh, just pre-walking. All right, I'll have it around Thank here. You. Just 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 don't don't take too long, okay? I I was I have a date. I had a oh. date. And it'll just kind of float off uh, down the hallway. All right. Are we... We came in here on a rescue mission. We found mm -hmm. our person we are rescuing. Do we really want to follow Jeff into a lich's lair? Wraith! He calls over his shoulder. Wraith's or... lair. And Maybe. knowing how to get to it and knowing how to deal with it later, perhaps? Could he mark it on our map? Did you get a map? We don't have a map. There's no map. Not of the cave. Not of here. Oh, right. I mean, we could make one, but that might take a while. Oh! Can he impart the knowledge to us? He seems to have that ability. Beam it to our brains! And that'll be overrun with with race. Without him here to him out. Mm hmm mm. Joe, do you have a map of the mines? Why would I need a map? They just summoned me. I've been sitting inside of the forge for uh, uh, 600 years. I, I don't know. I didn't know. If I'm sorry. That was terribly rude. I apologize. I'm just a little irate. Look, there's some cool, there's I'm some really cool stuff in there. Do you want to come see my cool, you want to come see my room? Yes. I really want to come to your room. <laughs> I put up a poster. Oh. 
I was allowed one item and I brought a poster. I really wish I brought a book. <laughs> I really, really want to see this poster. Oh my god. Uh, Sindri will kind of like be on like the tips of his boots and <laughs> this is this is think of the adventure we're on it's I know I know we've just rescued we've just reckoned, uh, rescued Nundro and, and you only get these a... the chance for these kinds of stories was... and chance. then he'll be gone to his own plane and we won't have to like looking to Lady Alessandra and then he'll go back to his own plane and we'll never have to worry about him ever again <laughs> just, just, just once. Hmm. And I did almost die today, and it was very scary. Christine is making very good faces that the audience doesn't <laughs> <to> enjoy. <laughs> what and sort also, of yeah. um, standing does like a wraith have? They're dicks. It sounds They're undead. much nastier. They're absolute jerks, really. Eh, this sounds we like an endless it, terror, uh, potentially. Not necessarily from lying beyond the stars, but maybe something we should deal with. It's as good people in general. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. I really want to go. <laughs> uh, Jeff, as if if we go with you, um, may I ask, what uh, what were you paid in? Paid? What was your deal for watching the mine? You were contracted, you say? Oh, they contact. They 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 brought me into this realm of existence and just you know kind of left oh. me here, you know, and charged me with the task. Um, they so, they summoned they summoned me to guard the items and and magic items that were were there and uh, well, uh, you, you agreed or they didn't? Oh, you don't agree with did? summoning? They just pull you into this realm of existence and then if you like existing what? at all, you have to agree to it or else uh, you know, bop. You just, you just, you stop. That oh. seems rather one-sided. Oh, yeah, 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 what's the word? What's the word? Uh, indentured... Uh, Servitude? Yeah, mm, it feels like that with more steps. No, um, unpaid intern? Unpaid internship, that's right. Um, I think I was learning how to manage a mine. Oh. <laughs> the darkest, the darkest of deals. Yes, mm. <laughs> truly. It was supposed to be a paid co-op, but, uh, you know, magic. Mm. Did you at least get credits for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only one and a half. Back? Oh, God, it's the UVIC system. Why? God damn it. Yeah, it's only, it's only, oh. Why, why is it a three-point system? That's yeah, true. Ah! That's true. For the rest of the world, let's translate that. Uh, yeah, only one semester worth, though. After nearly 600 years. Well, I mean, they would just count me as taking the same course multiple times. You don't get credit for that. Oh, it didn't gosh. give you the highest grade out of the ones? Oh, it's pass Is fail. it just a pass-fail? It's pass-fail. Oh, fail. no. I'm so sorry. That's terrible. <laughs> It's okay. I, mean, I can't. <laughs> Throughout all this, Alessandra's face is going from otherworldly, extra planar to like, oh shit, that actually really is really sucky. Oh god, that's a rough end. And then kind of <laughs> looking back and forth, like, oh no, I'm supposed to not like this thing. Oh shit, that's really rough, dude. Like, damn. <laughs> but he did say he'd go home after after he helped you guys out. So. No, exactly. But she's like. Is everything I've been taught wrong? So anyway, it's not like I'm here to conquer the realms, right? You know, that's my family. Uh, me, I'm just studying. I'm trying to get into college, you know? Hmm. I want to do something. I don't want to just be a ravager. Or, you know, I want to be a spectator. I want to be an anthropologist. Yeah. Um, hold on, hold on. What's the, the spell school you have the ring from? Uh, that the signet ring we found Sorry. on the wizard Car body. <laughs> Krista can't breathe right now. So, uh, did I write that down? Oh, I need a oh. T-shirt with Jeff the anthropologist. It's spelled with a G, by the way, because he's shaped like a G. <laughs> Is it just G E F F though? Or G E P H, even better. No, he's he's got yeah G E O P H because it's a fantasy <laughs> the worst name. 
telling. <laughs> oh, and because, like, yeah. Geo. Oh, no. Geo. Oh, and now no. Alessandra's yeah. like, okay. They have variety and differences in opinions, apparently. Wow. I can't just assume if it's otherworldly that it's evil. It's like it's Crap. not black and white. <laughs> this makes life hard, goddammit. I now need to check every single one of them before I kill yeah. them. Papers? Papers? Oh, do, you have, do you have your international student visa? <laughs> Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> My name is Jeff with a huge Oh, I hate yeah. it. <laughs> like, enough. But, Jeff. Enough. Yeah. Oh Jeff. God. Jeff are, are is enough. G, G enough. <laughs> yeah, enough. Um, enough. He's enough. So, you want to come see this poster or not? Come on, guys. Yeah, come on. All right. I think he's becoming more and more of just a nerd. I really love it. <laughs> All right, so the spectator Kelly's is going to float off down the hallway. Like, I'm the spectator, too. All right, so we got to finish our degree. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, guys. And he's going to lead you by, uh, lead you down the hallway, um, which is where we're going to pick up in just a minute because we're going to take a quick bathroom break as he guides you on the tour. <laughs> so don't go anywhere, guys. My name is Jeff. I am the spectator. I am the spectator. I <laughs> see yes. I see many things. Oh god, we'll be back. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk. We're going to keep going into game tonight without doing our chat, just because hey, it's my birthday. I'm going to take some time at the end of game and I want to get us through this. I will say, originally, the spectator's not supposed to leave his lair. And I was like, no, you're not missing him because he's glorious. I don't want to miss our friend. And then I made him worse. He's fantastic. I like All him right. very much. He's not normally quite this good. He's supposed to have like a raspy voice. And I'm like, no, his name is Jeff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. And uh, so. He takes you down a corridor. And uh, at the end of it, you see that it has a number of winds and turns. In fact, there is a large, actually quite immense booming cavern and it is here that as you walk through that sound that that echoes through the cave here wow. at regular intervals a fresh surge of water funnels into the chamber and slams against the wall just below the ledge that you walk on the echo suggests that this cave might be one arm of a much larger cavern to the northeast as you make your way through, you can see something moving in the water with tentacles. But you move quickly, and there is not much else to see, passing by the giant creature in the water eventually pays you no mind. He takes you down around the corner, and soon you find yourselves inside of a large room. This area was a workshop at one point and was badly damaged by the ancient spell battle that laid waste to the mine. Work tables taking up two corners of the room are scorched and the plaster has burned off the masonry walls. In the middle of the room, a stone pedestal holds a small brazier 
in which an eerie green flame dances and crackles. The brazier and its pedestal appears to have been untouched by the forces that destroyed this area. So what do you think? The spectator says. Kind of showing you around. Kind of cool, right? What's the poster? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. And he's going to go over to the door and there's a piece of parchment that's curled up after hundreds of years of age. And he's going to go, oh, and he kind of smooths it out. Huh? What do you think? Leaning forward, you see it is a minimalist poster of Visit Scenic Iowa. Yes. <laughs> I was hoping it was a visit someplace. Oh. Where's Iowa? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm hoping to get there someday. Well, it looks very nice. I wish you all the best in that endeavor. Right? I think it's pretty cool. I mean... I, I mean, I've been staring at it for 600 years. It's mostly black and white now, to be honest. It's kind of faded out. <laughs> but, but Iowa, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a good name. It's a good name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, um, I think I knew someone known called the Ayahuasca before. Oh, that's probably where it comes from. Probably. It's just a nickname, right? That sounds like soup. Could I have a bowl I, of ayahuasca? I, <laughs> I don't know. Can I go home now? Yeah, or do you need me to do something else? Oh, cool. Thanks. Wait, you, no, wait, wait. <laughs> Son of a bitch. And he's going to vanish in a puff of logic. He was going to show us where the wraith lived. You know, yeah. I have a feeling we'll find it rather quickly. If it's summoning things right here, it's probably the thing in the water. The the thing that Wraiths didn't care are about usually us? humanoids. That you I mean, know. We don't with the undead all that often, or well, ghosts. Or... Also, didn't we all think this yeah. was going to be a little bit more, more? something? Hmm. It, um... It's just kind of a room with a brazier in it. Looking at the brazier, can I get anybody who has... This arcana? is just Jeff's room. This isn't where the wraith lives. I thought this was the Spellforge. No, I, I had... I had, I had... No! He said, do you want to see my room? The wraith <laughs> is the one that is in this Spellforge. I had no expectations uh... of Jeff's <laughs> room. Actually, oh it does look like God. it might be a forge of some kind. So maybe it is the spell forge. There is a it's secondary cool room. Uh, the door that he has the poster on leads to the north. Uh, but if you look around, can I get um, can I get an Arcana roll from anybody? I am so <laughs> sorry, everyone. I thought this, I literally thought this was a spell forge. <laughs> I'm like, that's why I'm sitting around. I'm like, like this is a shitty spell forge. Uh, okay. 19. <laughs> 19. So, Anthea. Is it Arcana? Arcana. Yeah, 23. So nice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so the Spellforge you're... sucks. So, but as you're saying that, looking around the room, you take a look at the green flame. Um, Sindri, Sindri, this, this, and uh, Carmilla, this is the Spellforge. You can see that there. On the side it's of the brazier is written brazier, property of the spell forge in Dwarven. Oh. And you can oh. see well, that it is the it was... source of all the magic that has subdued the surrounding caverns. Mm hmm Does anyone know how to use it? Uh... Rev told us that the wraith lived in the spell forge. He didn't say I we lived in the spell forge. <laughs> You know, after 600 years, I think his brain got a little bit muddled, maybe. Or oh, perhaps he has an asshole of a roommate. Oh. Suddenly there is a Maybe he was a the wraith. Poof. Maybe he was lying this whole time. <laughs> and suddenly what? Jeff is back in the room. Oh, hi. Oh, hey, guys. I forgot my poster. Jeff, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> um, where's the wraith? Oh, he's trying to get into the Spellforge. I said he was in the, yeah. he's in one of the, um, he's in the uh, wizard's quarters across the way by the Starry Cavern, uh, near the Smelter Cavern. 
<laughs> you know what I say? If you're in the smelter cavern, you're in the delta cavern. Um, sorry, was I supposed to? Uh, what? Uh, he, 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 there's a room just to the south. That, that's where he is. Okay. Um, do you know how to use this? Oh yeah, you just put stuff in it. Yeah, what kind of stuff? Nurse oh. gonna stick one of her short swords in it. Oh. Just like dropping one in. All right. As you do, so suddenly nice. the spell forge is going to grind and. And the flame is going to suffusing the blade. Uh, yeah, probably. Huh. And you, a little miniature sky beam is going to shoot out of the forge. Ooh. Well, that's fancy. And then it's going to subside, and your blade is going to glow slightly. Wow. I will go uh, look around, grab a cloth or something from her bag so she's not doing, like, direct skin contact or... Mm. Yeah, I don't think she really has a ghost. She's just going to wrap her hand and, like, in, a, in, his, in some cloth and then just, like, probably the edge of her shirt and she's going to go mm. and grab it. Okay, so <clears> you, you pick it up and as you lift it, um, it is going to actually... Like, you're going to pick up your short sword and kind of like go, ooh, and it's going to slice off a piece of your clothes. Like someone used uh, the drag and drop tool on Photoshop. It's going to go, whoop, like that sharp. Hmm. You know, I'm going to say it's your tie. It's going to go right across part of the ribbon. Just, yeah, your you're ribbon. Under. It's going to go just cut it off in a straight line right before your neck. Uh I think I got it that close to my neck. That became way more dangerous. Yeah, it's mm. it's kind of old, so it doesn't really work that well anymore, but you know, it'll last for a few hours at least. I, I played around, I put my poster in it once. What did, oh, that, what did do? that do? Yeah. Nothing. Set it on fire. Mm. Oh. See? He points at the singed corner. Hmm. It's probably for the best that you got it out of there. But I mean, I don't know, maybe if you left something in there for a real long, long while, it would bake up. Hmm. Like bread? No, like, I mean, it would just, like, suffuse with energy. Oh. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I get it now. But I, I don't know, I don't know how much, uh, how much juice is left in the old gal. It might take everything to, to charge something for good. Hmm. I'd put something metal, hmm. though. It was made by dwarves. Dwarves are pretty metal. Oh, speaking of which, there's a bunch of crap in the north room. I don't need it anymore, and uh, well, it's your it's your mind. So uh, enjoy. Alessandra wants to put her silver can. sword in that spell forge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's the north room? Oh, just right here. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, and he's gonna go whoop, 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 with his eyes and unpeel the poster from the wall. There's little bits of like blue tack on the wall behind it. And he, and he goes, sorry, I know that looking at the poster probably distracted you from the fact it's on a door. Ah, uh, thanks, Jeff. Hey, no worries. Uh, was there anything else you needed? Uh, no, you're good. Anyway, that Wraith's a real jerk. He used to be a wizard uh, consumed by hate, been throwing undead at me for years. But I think if you kill him, all the undead die. Hmm. That's good to know. You know, vampire rules. Sure. None of you are vampires, right? No. No. Good enough for me. Stuff to the north. Vampires to the <laughs> south. Er. <laughs> no, wraiths to the south. Vampires. Uh -huh. Wraiths to the left of me. Vampires <laughs> to the right. Here I am, stuck in the spell forge with you. <laughs> Anyways, anyway. I'm gonna go check out that shit. <laughs> so <laughs> enjoy the shit. I don't need it anymore. Bye, everybody. And Jeff will okay. pop out of existence again, this time forever, with his poster. Uh, Sindri, I I apologize. I misunderstood. Um it has been a difficult day. <laughs> you were truly, correct. I almost died twice. And you uh, know yes. what? Yeah, this sucked. Let's get this you Yet you are still more on the ball than I. <laughs> uh, it's a combination of healing magic from Anthea and Lyric. Uh, 
Yeah, it's like fine. a coffee. It's what I I'm mean, for. It, it's a pickup, and you yeah. are for, you are have, you are both many talented. Thanks. That sleep spell you cast earlier saved our ass. Truth. All right. Sometimes Who's you need yeah, a good nap. I, I want. I want to go take that. I want to get stuff, I'm and then curious. I want to get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, Uh, Alessandra, did you put your stuff with your silver sword in the forge? Um, so Alessandra was going to see if we want to check what stuff was left behind, in case there was something better to stick in the forge. Um, but otherwise, if this potentially, like, could permanently make something, like, low-level magical, she would totally love to stick her silver sword in there. Fair. It can do weapons or armor. Or shields. But she figures she's not using the silver sword right now. So if we need to go fight a wraith, she could leave it there. <laughs> Fair. All right. But if anybody else has one that they would like to pitch to put in, then she will, of course, just be like, oh, yeah, totally. So whoever opens the northern door, there's a small room, a separate workspace where items were prepared for enchantment, uh, were polished and prepared, lacquered, painted, and otherwise finished. It's heavily damaged. And as you peek your head in, you are going to see that there are a pair. Well, there are a pair of items. A bunch of broken things, but sitting amidst the wreckage, you are going to see on a work table to the southeast corner are a pair of items that are in pure, perfect condition. One is a breastplate with a gold dragon motif worked into its design. It looks phenomenal and has swirling breath on each one of the plates of its breastplate. Breathing fire into the center, creating this ball work of golden armor. Well, that's fancy. Um, but completely useless for me. Um, I would like Lyric to make me a history roll. Specifically Lyric. What'd you get? Uh, thankfully, I am proficient in history. So that's only a... Hold on. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Oh, no, I've got expertise. That's why. Okay. Uh, history is going to be, that's a 10. A 10? So looking at this, um, you recognize this as belonging, it looks like it was made for one of the heroes of Neverwinter. Uh, you do. Todd. Turgle. Todd Howard. Tarragon. Something like that. Oh, actually, uh, it's uh, Turgon. Turgon. Uh, he was a known dragon fighter, uh, a human hero Turgon? of old. Turgon? Turgon, T-E-R-G-O-N. Okay. Uh, but that's not what's striking you. I'm going to spend a something good happens for this. Uh, uh -huh. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save that something good happens because I could spend it for something else. Um, yeah. However, sitting next to this breastplate is a gently glowing mace. The head of it is shaped like a sunburst, and it is made of solid brass. It gr it glows softly, but with an internal fire, like a lantern that has not had, well, that hasn't had its, um, its eye opened, but is waiting to dawn. Carmilla, you, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to make me a wisdom save. Or, pardon me, make me a charisma <clears throat> save. Okay. Oh. It's my charisma. Uh, that's a 19. 19? You are not afraid of this, but looking at it does raise your hackles instinctively. You're fine. And you can choose how you act, and hell, you can even choose to touch it. But that part of you, the part of you that flashes back to the injections and what your uncle did to you recoils looking at this. 
This thing has the touch of dawn. <clears throat> I, well, I think in that that recoil, she very much is like she forces herself to overcome it to go see what this thing is and like open it up. Okay, uh, it is a mace. Do you pick it up? Yeah. All right. As you do, the sunburst head begins to glow brightly, filling the room with golden light. And you are going to <laughs> hear like a... like you, or...? You're going to hear a voice <laughs> echo through your head. <laughs> Who art thou? I am Lightbringer. Uh, she'll respond in her head. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Camilla Alazarin. I know not, Camilla Alazarin. Are you my wielder? Be you a cleric? In this moment? No. I sense corruption within you. But what's your alignment? Remind me. Uh, lawful good. But something else. A temperance. Lathander's light shall not burn you on this day, Carmilla Alazarin. I will allow you. Thank you. I will allow you to wield me against the unholy forces of darkness. Should you wish. I would wish. Consider it done. You can now be attuned to a Lightbringer, a <laughs> mace made for Lathander's cleric, the god of dawn. Uh, it glows as bright as a torch when commanded, and while glowing, it does an extra d6 of damage to undead creatures. Cheesy crazy. Cheesy crazy. This could come in handy. <laughs> cheesy crazy. Cheesy crazy. Uh, Stop calling me cheesy crazy. <laughs> Uh, wowzers. Okay. <laughs> uh, just so everyone knows, I am on the journey of truthfulness. The mace has spoken to me. Uh, did it now? That's, um, <laughs> concerning. I uh... mean, are, don't many legendary weapons speak with their wielders? The heroes of Did legend? They? I mean, you've told me stories like that before. Well, yes, it, usually it's an anecdotal hyperbole for flair. Oh, I thought you were you were serious. Oh no, most bard tales uh, are not literal. But, but like dragon bait and alias and Drizzt and his swords mm, and. I think Camilla's <sighs> not finished. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, perhaps Anthea should. Uh, take a look at it, but uh, it said it was of Lathander and was w to be wielded against the forces of darkness and if we are to go against the Wraith perhaps it will be useful. It says it has allowed me to wield it. Oh, how generous. This, well, despite is the corruption a, inside of me. A good god. I, I can take right? a look at it. Uh, I believe you. I can take a look at it. And I see if Anthea her. thinks it's cursed. <laughs> <laughs> can I do identify as a ritual? Absolutely you can. Thank you. Hell yeah. So, so doing it as a ritual, it is a it is a very powerful magic weapon uh, designed to destroy the undead. Oh. It is not cursed. It is intelligent. Uh, oh. And charismatic, uh, and is divinely bound to Lathander, the god of dawn. You were correct. It is has a mind in it, I suppose. I don't know. That's very strange. 
<gasps> but anyway. Mm hmm. Well, um. There you go. Yes, I suppose okay. this would. Thank you. It's yours um, now. That they're yours now? I'm not sure. I don't want to be disrespectful. <laughs> A voice will echo throughout the chamber. <laughs> now, without the spectator here, I will destroy all that binds me to this place. And, and excuse me, fuck off, Skeletor. <laughs> With the, the spectator, there's no one here to watch you die. Oh! Oh! Oh, that was oh. a fun lyric. You know what? Mockery, Fuck you! Right? <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> get wrecked. <laughs> you know what? Fuck you, buddy. As you hear? As, <laughs> God damn it! As as a a, a wraith cloaked in a spectral garment will suddenly. Go, <laughs> appear in the room glaring at you and i need an initiative roll i was gonna say before it keeps talking <laughs> I'm just, gonna, just gonna turn pull the axe and attack all right well let's see if your initiative will be to that i'm not sure how uh serious this module is supposed to be but with this party <laughs> there's a reason i switched to skeletor with any of us Fair enough. <laughs> And come on, I'm sorry, Kelly, you gave it Skeletor's voice. Of it's amazing. Of course going to be yeah. next to it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, I don't think he was moment. mean to Jeff I this whole for 500 something years. Like, come on. I'm going to give a big prop. For Jeff. For Jeff. I like that in this case, Alessandra has no doubts God about what it. should be done to this dude. <laughs> okay. So, uh, nobody's surprised because he blew his initiative. Um, okay, so we've got Carmilla. <laughs> Line. All right, Chris, I want you to roll me a d20 and tell me what you get. 14. Oh, God damn it. I rolled a three. <laughs> we all beat his initiative? You all beat his initiative. Okay, uh, so yeah, I've got I've got Carmilla with a 22. I've got Lyric with a 21. I've got Anthea with a 20. I've got... Ella with a 19. I have Sindri with an 8. And yet I also have uh what's his name then? Mormesk the Wraith. Uh with like a with an 8. Mormask. Alright, so Mormesk the Wraith appears. <laughs> and Carm <laughs> yes, Carmilla. <laughs> have we had the equivalent of a short rest? Nope. You didn't take one. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure with the walking and the testing and yeah. Okay. You have to announce okay. that you're doing a short rest, unfortunately, so fuck you! Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if Get it's your... fucking wrecked. <laughs> okay, it's your turn. <laughs> oh, I accidentally brought Neznar the spider with me. <laughs> so close to a nat 20. Uh, it's a 25. Uh, that that will hit. And so is, what were the stats on this mace again? So it it's a mace, one? so it does a d6. Uh, but it does okay. an additional d6 against undead. And wraiths Perfect. are at least 50% undead. <laughs> by volume. Beautiful. Um, okay, uh, so, so yes, yeah, so a 25 hits? Uh, uh, yeah, 25 hits. Okay. Uh, and then I'm also going to use a... Um, uh, superiority dice. Uh, superiority dice for distracting strike. Uh, that is a 11, 13 plus 4 is 17 damage. Okay. You're going to bonk him right up the head with this glaring light. And he's going to. That's fucking bright, you noob! What the fuck are you saying? <laughs> Get wrecked, scrub! What <laughs> arcane language do you speak? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can 
subscribe and smash <laughs> that bell, bitches! <laughs> yeah. you into Funny the fucking ground. It. It Holy fuck. <laughs> oh. All right, Carmilla, uh, anything else you can do on your turn? Uh, no. <laughs> I can't. I, we didn't get a short rest, so I can't uh, action surge. All right. But so whoever rush... hits him next gets advantage. All right. Uh, so rushing up, you are going to give him the bonks. Um, and Lyric, you are up. Right. Um. So I want to cast Bane. All right. I can uh... meet the three targets, but I will just select the one. Okay, and that's a charisma save. Uh, I have I a 14. So. Oh, that meets my thing. Oh, right, so that means that he's fine. He's too charismatic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fine. We'll just have to do this the hard way. Um, And I guess we're going to bardic inspiration to... Let's do... Let's do... Because everyone else's one has has already faded, because mm. um, it's been too long. But I will give that to Alessandra. All right, sounds good. And Thea, you are up. Okay, let's do, let's let's bring it back. Let's do a firebolt. <laughs> right in the face. Oh, that's not gonna hit. That's gonna be like an eight. You'll have to try harder than that! Alright, get him, Squish! What? Is that potion getting sassy? <laughs> I rolled a 19, so... <laughs> uh... <laughs> yes, uh, he uh, is! Uh, um, five force damage. He's gonna spit a spectral tooth onto the floor. It looks like that potion's beyond its expiration date! Hey, don't listen to him, Squish. You're beautiful just the way you are. <laughs> it sticks yeah. its it sticks its tongue out somehow. It forms a tongue and goes. <laughs> All right, Alessandra. Tell him. All right, Alessandra's gonna move up. Say, I think you're the one past your expiration date by several hundred years. What? Pop celestial re revelation. Oh. And attack. All right. And I can use the bardic on attack, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. And it's a d6? I believe at this yes. level that is correct. And okay. whatever you roll on it will do a burst of thunder damage of whatever that value is. Uh, I rolled a three on it. So I rolled an 18, uh, so that's going to be... Your attack has advantage. Oh, shit, it does. Oh, wait, pardon me. Um, Anthea's attack would have had advantage. Yes, actually. Or whoever attacks oh. first, whether it's Anthea or Squish. Yeah, so Anthea, roll again to see it if that would have been hit. been me. Okay. Um, it would have been me. Squish always goes after me as my bonus action, mm -hmm. which is why he I didn't use him with uh, Healing Word. Anyway, no, I rolled another two. <laughs> okay. It was worth the try. It was worth the try. <laughs> we tried. All right. Uh, so I rolled an 18, and that gets 6 added to it, so 24. 24? To hit. 24 is absolutely going to be a hit. All right, so that's 3 on the Bardic di Inspiration die. Are you smiting? I am smiting. Okay, that makes sense. Because fuck this asshole. Uh, that is going to be 8 on the regular... 8 plus... One sec. For regular damage. Uh, okay, and then it was... He makes so a save. 12. Okay. 12 regular damage. Okay. And then... Uh, 16 Radiant. Damn. Because I add 2 from Radiant Soul, which is the Celestial Revelation. Okay. And then I rolled 2d8 on Smite and got 14, because I rolled 2 right. seconds. There's going to be an explosion of energy as you smash into him. And he is going to go, Is that a silver blade? Come on, stop being a cock knocker. No, the silver blade's in the spell forge. I'm using the hue. Oh. The axe. All right, well, that still sucks. That still bypasses my damage resistance. Yes, because it's a magic weapon. Hacks, 
Hacks! He's gonna start screaming. Hacks! You're the hack. All right, Cindri, you're up. <laughs> oh, I think I've heard some of these on the high seas before. All sorts of terrible pirates. Uh, and some people <laughs> will run behind. We're vicious mockery. We'll run behind him and do fire damage with unarmed strike from with the ascendant dragon monk. Okay. Uh, going to make my unarmed attack. All right, do it. And that's going to be uh, an eighteen to hit. And that is going to be a hit. And then <laughs> nine points of fire damage. Holy crap! Okay, so all right, so the fire damage is going to singe him, but he seems he seems tougher than you expect as the fire damage strikes mm. him. Ha. Huh. Shit. Okay. So it does singe him, though. It, do, it does damage him, but it doesn't do full damage. It doesn't. It does, do... doesn't seem to do full damage. You're not hot enough to get past my defenses. Uh, he man. Okay. So, so ice yeah. damage isn't likely to do it. Uh, f- uh, lightning damage might do it. Uh, poison damage won't do it. Thunder damage. Oh wait, thunder damage. Try necrotic damage, bitch. Oh, you are the worst. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Literally, his entire write-up is that he met his end at the, the spell battle, the climax of uh, abandoned deck centuries of anger of poison to soul, transforming him, him, transforming him into a hate-filled apparition, a.k.a. the YouTube comment section. <sighs> I'm going to do lightning damage. All right, lightning damage? Yeah, okay. so I'm going to make use fl- flurry of blows to attack twice. Flurry of blows. Uh, flurry of blows, that's 23 to hit. That's a hit. And that's going to be seven points of uh, lightning damage. Oh, it's it hurts, but it doesn't hurt quite as much as you'd like. Uh, that's a 10, so that's going to be a miss. Oh, that's only a 10? Okay. All right, so you miss as you punch past him, and he goes, How about you try this on for size? Me! And he... You guys are all surrounding him, right? Oh, yeah. Would yep. everybody who is in attack range physically like to make me an opportunity attack because he botches? <laughs> he botches oh, yeah. one attack. Does a 23 hit? <laughs> Does a nat 20 oh, hit? <laughs> <laughs> Carmilla? Does a nat 20 hit? <laughs> oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> Get his ass! Holy shit! <laughs> okay. All together so, now. So here's what happens. <laughs> no question. Much? Divine smite. All out of town. <laughs> yes. Spot, but doesn't have any casting time or anything like that. It just Divine, happens on a hit. It just, it just happens on a hit and it doubles. Uh-huh. Yeah. Off, uh... It's dice. Uh, I'm. So I didn't see. I just I wanted... seven damage. I, I just just roll your damage. And you know what, Lyric? If you want to make an attack roll, just run up and start kicking him. You can. Uh, <laughs> I'm using my superiority die, so that doubles. What okay. I need you to think, understand is that Lyric's planning on using disguise self to make herself look like him. <laughs> and just stand over him and just look at him judgmentally. Okay. So Hang I'm on, choosing psychological warfare. <laughs> so that's 30 points of damage. From Alessandra. Okay. Twenty-eight. Some of which is radiant, the rest of it's magical. Thirty-four. Oof. Okay. <laughs> and you remember to you remember to double the bonus d6, right? Yes. Okay. And I remembered that I have great weapon fighting, and so okay. my weapon. Sindri, how much my did weapon you do? Wins the world one. No seven. I did seven uh, fire damage. So. Okay, so that was thirty-four. Wait, it was thirty-four. <laughs> Plus 30. And 30. Plus 7 <laughs> divided in half to 3. So oh, what happens is yes. he goes and goes, try this on for size, and then takes a step spectrally toward you, Sindri, going, <gasps> and then steps on the two, the spectral tube he spit out, slips, falls on his ass, and goes, wait, we can talk this out. And then you guys beat him down. <laughs> He had ten hit points. You did his hit points in damage this this attack. <laughs> ah, 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 my bones! My spectral bones! Uh, Lyric, you stand over him and shapeshift into him? Yeah, I'm using this guy's self. 
I think that only allows you to turn into a humanoid, but I'll allow this for, for shits and giggles. <laughs> well, I think, I think it would be like him, but like what Alive? they look like is more like a person. Yeah. <laughs> you're beautiful. And you're old news. <laughs> Remember me. 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 Wow. I won't. Ah, unsubscribed, he says as he dissolves into nothing. <laughs> Anthea and Squish are going to somehow raise tens over their head. You t you took your round just to write ten. <laughs> Squish, too. He's got a tiny one. Oh, and he turns it around because it was upside down. Good job. Good job. Well, well that was anticlimactic. Man. Huh. I, I am quite hmm. sorry that I suggested we avoid him. Because I'm glad we met him. He was... I'm not particularly. I don't know what he was saying. I just have more questions. I think I think he's from a time long past, right? So well, I think most of it was kind of nice to fight yeah. an unambiguous enemy. Hmm. He was just kind of an asshole, wasn't he? Very he really was. Evil. He wasn't exactly what the spec or Jeff beamed into our heads, though. <sighs> I'll never get that out. I imagine Jeff probably like had him like worked out to be like somewhat different and worse. He, like as someone who mm -hmm. was sending him skeletons, or maybe they actually formed a sort of friendship after all this time. Oh, like it's a trauma possible bond. that after spending so long with someone, you just get a distorted perception of them and just hate them. The oh. opposite can happen. And he did sort of single-handedly hold him off for 600 years. So it is very well possible hard. that yes, that and he just wasn't that strong, I suppose. So I, I presume, based on what Jeff said, that was the only real threat here in the mines. Should we just collect Thardin and this Delouse and take them back? Hmm? Let's, let's go. Yeah, I think so. It's been a very productive day. I think it's... Yeah. Oh, Lady Alessandra, don't forget your sword. Oh, right. Hopefully that was long enough. I'll spend a something good happens. As you pull your sword out of the green flame, it's going to flicker and turn just barely into an ember as the magic flows into your blade. It is now a plus one sword. Oh, yes. wow, that looks pretty good. Plus one silver. <laughs> Hot damn. Is that plus one plus one or just to attack? It's plus one on everything. Cool. All right. You make your way back to where you have the spider, the louse, whatever his name is, locked up in stasis. And soon enough, you are going to be able to escape with Nundro. It's been a couple of hours, and by the time you get back there, Nundro is very happy to leave. The spider, well, makes a bit of a attempt to make his presence and displeasure known, but you quickly dissuade him of this. And soon, you all make your way out and head back to the town of Fandalin. You encounter no difficulty leaving Wave Echo Cave. And before long, you find yourself once more inside of the safety of the town. As soon as you cross into Fandolin proper, your horses gleefully carrying you, although one of them is having to carry both a dwarf and a bound drow. <clears throat> Gundren, 
will rush over, with a couple of the townspeople at his side. The Burgenmaster, the, um, or the mayor-ish figure, will run over as well as as well as the priestess of the local temple, well, altar. Brother, you're all right. Go. The dwarves embrace each other. And one by one, as you stand there at the front of the village, the people of Phandalin are going to trickle out, hearing the commotion. You're going to see all of the townspeople that you've met through your time here. That you've liberated from the Red Brands, from Glassstaff, and now the Spider. Heck, you've even killed a dragon, according to the stories that are beginning to be spread around town. You see Kayleen Alderleaf. You see Elminia Barthen, Darren Edermath, Sister Garel, Lenine Greywin, Sildar Hallwinter smiles at you, Sindri. Toblin Stonehill and his family are there, and Halia Thornton and Harbin Wester. All of Where's them. Droop? Is Droop there? And in the corner, standing there <laughs> next to Darren Edermath, you are going to see. Hey, I can't see anything. Can I get the? Can I get a boost up, Mister Edermath? Of course you can. Oh, hey, it's them guys. Welcome back. He's going to shout. You're going to see the halfling children. You're going to see everyone that you met in the town as they smile at you. And as the dwarves embrace, the head of the town, the town master, Harbin Wester, puffs out his chest and goes, Well, it seems that you've done it. You've caught one bad apple. No offense, Edamath. None taken. All of my apples are good. <laughs> well. On behalf of the town of Phandalin, I have to say, I'm very... Uh, we are in your debt. Truly. A lot of you are heroes. I know that now that you seem to have... Uh, According to Gunder, and a bit of a stake in the place. I was wondering, would a lot of you like to stay with us for a bit? We could always use some heroes. And perhaps we should have some negotiations about that. Perhaps we can, uh, Toblin will say, stepping in front of his inn. Perhaps we can do it over some drinks? Sure. Yes, please. Well, I'm pouring. And the town will applaud and laugh as you all head inside to get some much needed rest. Some things will happen in the near future that we'll catch up with soon. What you know for sure is that the spider ends up in the jail. Sildar intends to bring him up with the Lord's Alliance, taking him back to Neverwinter for trial. He's happy to take any of you with him who want to keep an eye on things. You'll also find that Gundren keeps to his word, and after a mournful burial of their departed brother, he and Nundro honor their word to you and give you a 10% stake in the mine. Each of you is going to receive a bit of money at the beginning of each chapter of this book, and if I forget, you have to tell me. But for next game, please divide evenly. Uh, that's exactly what I should have rolled. Uh, please divide evenly 300 gold between you. So each of you is going to get 60 gold pieces just for existing. Alessandra, you're able to get your home up and running again you're able to return to it. And there's even a spare room if you need to put someone up. Beyond that, there are a number of places in town for you to rent rooms for a fairly decent price, and some old buildings that could easily be converted. Sildar also has a spare room in his 
small place that he's willing to let out. He had intended to let his friend, who turned out to be Glassstaff, use it, but that never came to fruition. And as you prepare and enjoy... And that was Sildar, a... right? That was Sildar, yes. What did I say? Alessandra will casually poke Sindri about accepting that room. <laughs> After hearing what Gundren had to say. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Do you really want to spend money needlessly? No. It's a good I'm... deal. It's a very good deal. Mm -hmm. well, you two look like good door? friends. We, we are good friends. if you're comfortable with it. You know, we are good friends. Hmm. Uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, Cindy will 100% be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And what happens there is best left behind closed doors, but they say that, you know, if Sildar's house is a rockin', don't bother knocking. They say that. Don't that bother rockin'. or don't come? <laughs> oh, no. It's, there's going to, people are going to come. At least two. <clears throat> and, uh, Carmilla, you are celebrated and cheers and bought drinks and food and accepted by the locals here. And Lyric, there is no end to the amount of requests for your performances to tell the stories of your time here. And as we fade out from this, looking down over the town, and our newly minted level 5 heroes. It looks like things are going to be returning to normal in Phandalin. But from the nearby hills, we can see a sickly green glow. As a couple of small, twisted goblins with glowing eyes and elongated heads Look out of the shadows at the hapless Berg and say in Goblinese, Soon, soon we will claim it for Master. Yes, soon. And then we're going to do a camera push through and we're going to do a to be continued on that. Welcome to level five, everybody. Yay! Yay! Woohoo! Oh, extra uh, one... attack! Extra, extra attack. attack! Extra attack! Extra I attack! Thing too. I get a racial bonus. Ooh. That's racial bonus. <clears throat> Speaking of racial bonuses, everybody go check our YouTube on Valentine's Day for a very special video. Um, so folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Found Over and Below. Got a little wacky in the second half because, uh, because I spent a drama bomb to let it happen because the spectator is easy to miss. And I was like, no, he's so cool. I like him. And then he was, he was, I mean, he was Jeff. I, I love him. I like him too. Right. Uh, hey, big thank you, everybody. Um, welcome to level five. We are going to have a lot of fun. Um, and so for those of you continuing on with us, uh, we are now heading into the fun part of the module. I mean, it was all fun, but this is the part of the module where things actually get a little creepy, which is my favorite always. Um, however, our production schedule is going to be a little different. So we are still going to be running on Mondays, but I am away next week. Uh, it is my birthday. Uh, and I'm taking a little bit of time off. Uh, also, um, we have a house guest fo like following uh, immediately in the wake of the convention that we are participating at the following week. So originally on February 26th, I was going to be running a How to Run uh, Lost Minds of Fandelver episode. Uh, however, I, I want to spend some time with my friends while they're in town. So, and I know everybody wants to spend time with them too. So everybody wants to spend time with Robin while she's here. So we're going to go do that um, because uh, you don't get to see everybody as often as you like. And, you know, you need to see the ones you love. So sorry about that. We're going to, so we're going to take two weeks off and then we're going to come back. Hey, right, so I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you enjoyed the campaign thus far. We are going to be diving back in, in uh, just a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll decide whether or not we're doing a how-to episode or if we're just going to jump right back into the action. Depends how hungry we are for it. Uh, and uh, I look forward to sharing it with you. So uh, everybody, do you have anything you want to say on the way out? 
this was fun. Thank was you. it fun? And happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. I'm old. And thank you all for coming on this journey with us. It's been great so yeah. far. Yeah, it's and been great so far. More memories. Memories. Friendship. 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 <laughs> and you Friendship know who... is the arson we did along the way. <laughs> yep. Friend... Wait. Friendship is the arsenal you used along the way. I this group that. is like so wholesome together. It's, it's very funny. It's so wholesome. <laughs> like I know, this, I know like, your mace isn't as good as your sword, but my god, that mace is dope. You have Lightbringer. <laughs> Which at this point, does anybody <laughs> well, want <it's>... the axe? <laughs> oh yeah, does anybody yeah. want Hugh? Now that I have a, I mean, magic we just have to keep, we have to keep Hugh because my brain is definitely always thinking it is spelled Whoa, like H U G H. It is. It is now. Can I? Can I even wield it? I'll let you learn it's a over, martial over the melee weapon. I'll learn. I'll let you learn one. What? Uh, what? I'll let you learn one, one martial melee weapon. Mm -hmm. I would use you. All right. He's it's as a plus big one, as me. plus one. Let's and go. Damage against Actually, he plants gets a little smaller when you hold it. What? He gets oh, a little wow. smaller when you hold him because they're magic. Magic. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I just really liked that. Like, actually, is like the same size. Never mind. He doesn't get any smaller. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I misread the rules. I thought he's it was, lighter, but... lighter, oh but God, not that's smaller. So, good. <laughs> so yeah. my plus one strength lets yeah, me. <laughs> I misread it. That's everything. amazing. <laughs> All right. So oh, someone folks, else actually wants to. Uh, thank you for coming on this adventure with us. And a big thank you for uh, the people who helped this adventure happen in the first place. Those, of course, would be our patrons over at patreon.com slash dorktoast. We keep the lights on. Hey, folks, if you want to support the channel, go there right now. I would really appreciate it. And if we hit 175 patrons, uh, we're about, I don't know, like 30 off right now. Um, Christine's going to run a uh, Pride and Prejudice style D&D uh, &D game, which is going to be great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Christine, I did just back sentai's and sensibility the power <laughs> rangers jane austen crossover <laughs> that was very right, good that's amazing uh, that's if, if, good. if you are already a patron or if you're not a patron but don't have the funds to do so uh share the streams um mm -hmm. if you guys enjoy this i'm sure your friends would enjoy it too so have watch parties uh get together with your friends and laugh at us being dumb because that's that's what we do we're the best at being dumb Exactly. Nobody. And then maybe your friends want to join the Patreon and then maybe you guys can have watch parties for the Patreon and enjoy. It's good. We just want you to enjoy things. Hey, thank you so much. A big thank you to our patrons, of course, uh, the ones that I'm going to shout out right now, like my mom. Hi, mom. Thanks for birth. That was nice of you. I appreciate it. Um, uh, let's see. That's divine producer right there. Uh, our demonic producers, Precarious, uh, Shulton, and Kelowna Curd are just phenomenal. They are so devilishly charming. Uh, our wizards of the Patreon, Tammy the Forever Cleric, the Ink Goblin, and Sorcerer Sanguine are the most magical people. Uh, they are the ones that bought Jeff that poster. Thank you so much. Um, they didn't laminate it, though, so that's the thing. Uh, the High Council of the Patreon, of course, are who is buying everybody rounds here, and that is Taryn Dustin, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha, Urquhart, Sheffella, Death, Laruk, Mike. Mike Baxter and Iridian. And of course, a big thank you to our sponsor, Bookworm Games. Definitely check them out and use code DorkTales to save 15%. And if you are uh, in Vancouver for that gaming convention, go visit Krista. If you are on Vancouver Island, uh, which is different, strangely, uh, you can definitely come out and see us at SukinoCon, where we're running a bunch of events and I'm interviewing some voice actors at one point. It's going to be really nice. Uh, and besides that, come back on Valentine's Day to our YouTube for a cool video about uh, something. And Strixhaven uh, is back tomorrow night if you're on the Patreon and Strix Haven is back tomorrow night. It is. And we are gearing up for Vecna, Eve of Ruin. And also uh, when Strix Haven is done, it's going to be Descent into Avernus. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got so much stuff going on here and I need to sleep. So, hey, we'll see you next time, everybody. On Fandelver and below, the Shattered Obelisk. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>